All right, chat, we're getting this all set up and good to go. Oh man, this is going to be so good. Welcome back. Oh, we're in the nether now. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> That's, that was, okay, this one might be a little bit, this is going to be a little tricky. Hold on, I got this. Infinite mindfuck. I got this. I, this is going to be a little tricky. I'm going to have to build this. Build it and they will come. <laughs> what a great movie. What a great movie. Oh my. I want to go to that game next year. Yeah, man. If only tickets weren't like beyond expensive. All right. <laughs> We're back in the nether. <laughs> We're, oh. we're zooming in and out, taking a trip. I don't think going to work. <laughs> Flats, is, Flats is in arts and crafts class right now. <laughs> I never did well in arts and crafts either. God damn it. Me neither, dude. Oh. I, I, was, I, was easily, I was that kid that got a B in art. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? Like you, All you have to do is like show up, and my art was so bad. <laughs> I my art teacher hated me. Uh, he loved my art teacher loved us, but it, it was just kind of a joke. Like I didn't, I didn't care. It's like whatever. I got to be in art. Oh well. My first day of class ever, I was sick. It was because we started in the winter for that uh, that semester or that term. I was sick, and she called my name, and I was like, "Here," and she goes, slams the book down, and comes charging over, and goes, "Do you think it's appropriate to say yo when a teacher calls your name?" I was like, "What?" And the, the girl what? next to me goes, he said here. And the other kid next to my other side goes, yeah, he didn't say that. And she was like, oh, okay. And turned around and stormed away. I was like, <laughs> the fuck? Set the tone for the rest of the year right there. Yeah. Was that the start of the year? It was, it was, the, fir well, it was the first time we had her class. Like, so like we had like, we had like music. Opened? Yeah. That was, that's, that was the first class. The first time we had interacted. I was like, well, we're fucked. She wanted she wanted to set like a precedent. She was like, I'm gonna pick one of these kids out. I'm gonna fuck with him. Just let them all know I'm alpha. She, she, she's blast across the room. That, that kid he's going down. <laughs> he's the one. He'll be the example. Fuck, man. Honestly, it was it was fucking hell the rest of the year. I don't blame you, man. Jeez Louise. I'd be so mad. <laughs> That's so stupid. I would be so I would be super hyped if some kid was like, yo, it's just as an attendance roll call. That kid's a cool kid. Yeah, honestly, I just I remember we had to like uh we had to like build with clay one time and I asked her like uh you know, hey, can you put my thing in the like the the furnace or whatever to start glazing it? And she was like, No. It's like why? She was like, I don't like how it's painted. It was red. I'm like, okay, what's wrong with it? She was like Add more paint and change the color a little bit. I was like But I but I like the color. It's like <laughs> like like, no. How dare you like your own color, bud? I was like, How oh, okay. Imagine I added like a blue highlight. Like, no, she was like, okay, that's you good. You can't choose what you want. Yeah, I was like, oh, okay. I guess I didn't get to. This isn't mine anymore, huh? Cool. Nice. <laughs> Some people are not cut out to be teachers, I gotta tell you, man. They, they traumatize your ass. Oh, 100%. Yeah. I don't get that. Like, I don't, I don't get like why. <sighs> I don't know. Maybe they're just like not happy or something. Cause that, that is like people just tend to like act the way their environment makes them. You know what I mean? So like my, my dad's favorite saying is hurt people hurt. And it's just, it's so true. It's just, true. it's just so true. Like, Oh my goodness. I will say though, like uh, my like favorite teachers from high school are like some of the most impactful people on my life. Like for sure. Like they just completely changed the way I think it was. It's like a good teacher is just revolutionizing for your mm -hmm. life. For sure. Shout out to them good teachers. When I was in uh, my freshman year of high school, we had a brand new, like she was brand new to the school, like first year ever teaching biology teacher. And she was, I don't know what it, how I want to describe this, but like she was not very good at, what, at her job at all. Like she couldn't teach us. She would get frustrated about stuff. So bad that the dean had to start sitting in on classes because she was just like, I remember one day, she was like, if I write your name on the board, that's a warning. If I put a tick mark, that's an hour of detention. 
and the whole motherfucking class was on the board. And some people had like 14 ticks. They were starting to compete with who could get the most. <laughs> and like it was just off the charts. Nobody was going. And three quarters of the entire grade who had her was failing. Oh, shit. So, and this is like the third term. So, like, you take biology the whole year. So, like, first term, second term, third term. Yeah. We had one term left. And er three quarters of the grade was failing. And we were just like, you really think it's us at this point? Or, like, yeah, are we no going to figure this way. out? So, oh, I failed God. it. I finished with an F. I got an, a letter from the principal over the, over the summer. And said that they were scaling everyone's grades upwards based on their overall uh, GPA from other the classes. And like since mine was like averaging like a B minus, I immediately I got a B minus. I was like, oh, okay. Flat. I guess. That's fair. That's, uh, you, I'll take it. You have to realize as the teacher at that point, there, there's no way that. Yeah, oh, yeah, she got just, fired. Uh, yeah, she probably. <laughs> yeah, I don't understand like why teachers would want to be like that. You know what I mean? Like I would be like, I'd be super cool with all my students. Like I'd be super lenient. They're, you're young. You're in high school. Like the most important thing is not teaching them the subject itself because you're not gonna remember that. It's how, you just gotta teach them critical thinking and be kind. Like I, I just don't get it. I, just, yep. I don't know. What happens? What happens when a certain student enrolls? Sam called Brigitte Lindelholm. Uh, she's she's just expelled immediately. Like, get her out. <laughs> get, get her out, her out before out. she she <laughs> ruins the rest before, of the pool. She's gonna ruin yeah. all of it. Yeah. Factual. Like nah, she's 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 instagon. She's instagon. What's up, Frito? Sorry, I think it's the team for six months, but I appreciate it. Oh. <clears throat> Frito, you watching that pack game tomorrow? Yeah, I've been watching the whole season. Yeah, my favorite game was the Bengals game. That was fun. <laughs> Actually, that's the one game I missed. <laughs> oh, are you oh, serious, dude? <laughs> it was so bad. It was a literal toilet bowl. It was, it was the worst football I'd seen since I went to a Kentucky game. It was just, just awful. By the way, chat, if you want to see the whole POV, like the uh, overall overlay, I would go. You can also check out SVB stream as well, which is not so, live. That's what I just spent the last 45 minutes doing. Not sure. <laughs> Going through three years of patch notes. Oh. <laughs> any any guesses as to why? Are you like counting the number of nerfs to Brig or something? <laughs> <laughs> Damn right I am. And I wrote Wait, them all down. Well, on oh, you've been reviewing them? That's interesting because there's some stuff well, I, in I those. I want you to guess. I want you to guess how many nerfs she's received since launch. It's a Actually, lot. We're safe. We, we, we got to save this. We got to save this for the podcast. Yeah, we'll save it. We'll save it. We'll save it. it, it it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. I, I, have a, I have a general idea, I think. Yeah. But. I, I'm very curious your guess. Oh, it's double on, digits. It's got to be double digits. Oh, no. You want to use some content with Sam? Yeah, I'm sure. If he wants to. Sam getting water or something as well. Uh, <clears throat> All right, cool. He said he's gonna count the brig nerfs in the history of Overwatch. Well, he, he's yeah. He told me he went through three years of patch notes. He he took he said he took, went through three years of patch notes to figure so out. So we know exactly. he's loaded then. Mm hmm. Sam's sounds about to come with the whole fact sheet. And honestly, I live Sam for it because good. there's certain things I need to go back and look for too, like. Like when did they change uh, the Arissa shooting? Right, remember when they made Arissa like faster? Yes, yes, yes. When was that? That was a while ago. Yeah, quite a long it's way. So, ago, it's so I hard believe. to yeah, it's so hard to remember when these things came in place. That's when we were actually getting patch notes, which we don't get anymore. The most recent one was the headshot multiplier, I feel like, and then it was a few patches before that where the you mean the projectile moves faster? Is that what you're talking about? No, where she the, like her, her movement uh, speed, like while she moves while she shoots. Oh, yeah, that's Saiyan really old. Saiyan. Yeah, that's really old. That that might even have been open Q era when yes. they were like, let's make other stuff uh, viable instead of goats. I think that's part of what made double shield so strong originally, because like she was supposed to be like so slow and clunky. Then they went through two, two, right yeah, away into that never got reverted. So like they tried to make it like fast and fun, but like. She's just oppressive and terrible, and <laughs> you know how it goes. Oh, and this is two hundred bits. Appreciate it. Sam, you good? I uh, I'm hungover, but I'm good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, well, if you boys are ready, let's. I can kick it in. Yeah, I'm good. Are you live yet? All right. No, I, well, the starting soon screen is live, but okay. Hold on, let me let me grab that really quick. 
All right, cool. I'll just do the intro there in the meantime. Chat, if you want to see uh, SCV's point of view, Yo, what's it has up, like guys? the better How's overlay. It going? Hope you're having a very, is. very good Saturday evening, afternoon, morning, wherever you guys are coming from. Welcome for another episode of the Group Up podcast, which Flats Chat has already had a sneak preview access to the backseat, uh, backdoor <laughs> chat. But uh, yeah, so I'll quickly introduce the premise of the show, then I'm going to introduce our guests, and then we'll explain the format as well. So obviously this one is called the Great Save Overwatch Debate. So you guys, I'm sure by now know that Overwatch 2 is delayed. And that's brought some doom and gloom in the community. So I gathered the four henchmen here to uh, try and basically bring some positivity to the scene, try and bring some ideas that we think maybe could tide us over until Overwatch 2 comes out. So let me introduce my guests. First up beneath me on the screen right now is Frido. Frido, how you doing? Good. I'm glad I'm getting introduced first so I can go grab coffee. You guys know who I am. Be here all the time. Decided to have a good show. Right back. Get that coffee. In the bottom left is Flats. Come on down, Flats. How you doing? I'm here. I'm existing. <laughs> I'm uh I am I am basically being a magician nowadays, trying to make content out of thin air. So, you know. I seen those rabbits you've been pulling out. They they're, they're <laughs> mighty impressive. Mighty Dude, impressive. And some yeah. of them not going to lie, some of them are fucking out there, but like uh <laughs> You know what? Hey, people hated the tutorial video I put out, but hey, like, oh, that fuck, that video banged. I don't know, dude. <laughs> <laughs> people have never seen the training range. Before. I mean, the the, the 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 tutorials range before. Neither had I. So, I mean, <laughs> <sighs> we're scraping. We gotta do. We gotta do what we gotta do. And we had a little bit of preview of this talk with my man Samito in the top left. Samito, how you doing? I'm here. I'm here. I also here over. We're look making content out of thin air, just bourbon to cope, and then it just it's a rough morning. But we're here. We're here. Got some Jimmy John, so I'm chilling. Some, some Advil. Nice. So thank you guys for your time, and thank you for being here. So the the way this one is going to work is, guys. So each of these guys is coming with at least one idea that they think could tangibly improve Overwatch One right now or in the immediate future until Overwatch Two comes out. So we're going to discuss each of those first. And then I want you guys to be active with your ideas as well. So drop any ideas you have in chat. I've got a team of mods sitting behind the scenes. They're going to collect the best ideas. And at the end, we're going to run through those ideas as well and discuss what we feel about them and whether we you know, think they're good or bad or absolutely dog shit, as Sam will probably say. So on that note, let's get to the first idea. And I'm going to start off Can with a question before you go. Sorry, oh, I was oh, just yeah, a little go, confused go. on the format. So yeah, yeah. There, what's, what's the struggle for me is that, and I, I assume for most of us, is that the main focus is towards the well, like we know Overwatch 2 and the scope is supposed to be big, so big mm. that they've delayed it, which means mm. I think they know as well that it's got to feel feature complete at launch. And it, it just so, for example, there's a lot of things that I, I would say the game needs, but if it's got to wait till Overwatch 2, like I, I wasn't clear on the distinction. Yeah, sorry. sorry. So, I, so I, I should, I so. should clarify. So the ideas should be feasible to implement right now without. Presumably, how will we survive? How do we survive another year? Literally, a drop package. What would that look like until we survive the care package? Okay, how much is the minimum water we need to get from here to there without losing it all to sweat? Basically, all right. And so, that on that note, then flats, what you got for us? Okay, before I give mine, okay, this needs to be an overall general point because I have a feeling there's probably going to be people listening. We can't have no balance patches anymore, like. Cut the bullshit with that. Like, okay? Like, it doesn't have to be what we were promised. We were promised at one point, like, two years ago that we were going to get a balance patch every two weeks. That happened for about three months, and then it was given up on. The last realistic patch we've had was August 9th. It is uh, November 13th. Wait, was it really August 9th? Yeah. That was when, like, Doomfist got changed. Genji got changed. Oh, that's uh, right. Like oh we haven't God. had a real like we had like the mercy changes. Yeah. There was the experimental, but like like real balance changes haven't happened since that. And tank changes haven't happened for like June, <laughs> some sh yeah. something like that. So let's set the precedent there. Okay, that's number one. Like, and that's not an idea. That's just let's you know turn on the brain. This is for the a context. Sec. Yeah, the actual idea. Their needs, and I'm gonna I'll explain all the way through this. Their needs to be a drop event every month at the latest, at the least six weeks. And I mean, like, 
how the Cassidy event just happened, that drop event, there is no way in hell that could not happen once a month slash every six weeks. There was very little content in that event. There was a skin, which I wasn't a big fan of, but hey, some people like it, whatever. Three sprays, which were drops. I think two in-game sprays. And then some lore. You're telling me we couldn't get a skin event every six weeks? I don't believe it. That was very small. I, I actually believe that the drop events are amazing. I think that uh, Andy, who's like the new community manager for, for, for Blizzard, or one of them, because now there's Jody too, but is actually did a fantastic job with like finding new people, a lot of diversity in it. There was a little hiccup the other day, which I don't know if we want to cover that or not, but um, that, you know, that is a different problem of its own. But regardless, though, th that event was small at the best, you know. But what it did, though, is it brought us back to the numbers where we were in January. It didn't bring us back to old Overwatch numbers, but it brought us back to January. You know what January was? For those who don't know, Twitch Tracker it has a lot of stats and stuff like that. Overwatch has shrunk in viewership on by 50% since January on Twitch. It used to be around the 23K a month or average for the month. It's now around 9.5 to 10K average a month. So actually almost a little bit more than 50%. This event brought us brought it back up. Now, obviously, it's dying down over time. But it's nice to see like ML, Emong, and Jay like all back in the threes or 4K viewers where they always have been, you know? If you watch Daily Overwatch recently, it's kind of like you see them sitting around like the 1.7k, you know, and it's like it's kind of crazy to watch like the biggest streamers on the on our game have half the viewership that they did nine months ago. Because any other streamer, one that's demoralizing that you're like, oh my god, the ceiling is crashing in, but two, it gives you a really good idea that that passionate base that actually consumes all the content is decreasing fast, right? So even small events like this do a great job of, one, keeping the, the competitive audience having at least like little tiny scraps of the smallest piece of the corner of a piece of bread that was fallen on the ground and rolled under the table six weeks ago. The smallest piece, but on the casual side, it gives them a reason to come back and play. They had to play 27 games to get the skin. Great. They get to play arcade. They get to play quick play. Maybe we'll, some will play competitive. Probably not, but... It brings those people back, their viewers, which is good for the streamers. It's good for the content creators who are the legitimately the people that are still keeping interest in the game past the game itself alive. There, there isn't content flowing. There isn't like any like events that happen. There's, there's nothing to talk about other than people that make the content every single day right now. And even on the competitive side, like they have tons of problems and you know, they're it's, I think that's the scariest point is when people stop complaining. Not because they don't think it's good, but because there's no point. There's like, you have the point of like, everything's great, everyone's complimenting, everything's great, but there's something that can be fixed, everything's dog shit, and they're complaining about it. Silence. That's when we're in trouble, is when, when stuff gets silent. So, if we're gonna keep things as small as it is, and keep things, and we're not gonna get big pieces of content, I don't think we're gonna get any maps, I don't think we're gonna get any heroes, that stuff's not on the table. At least take a little bit of time, outsource it, have somebody make an, a skin every week or every month, start a drop event, it brings back casuals, it gives a tiny scrap to the, the, to the to competitive players, and it helps out your content creators a ton, because we're all scared. That is probably the least amount of effort and least amount of lift that could happen to really carry us for the next year. That's my that's my right. idea. That is Flats' presentation. I'm gonna take it to either Frito, Semi, or either you guys want to feed back immediately uh, on the yeah, idea. Yeah, I I would like to strongly devil's advocate uh, this position. Good, because I otherwise I would be doing it too. So go ahead. Okay. All right, you can help me out on it then as well. I okay, so I would take a step back. Because the way I'm feeling right now is we're in a recession and we're almost at like the discussion table of who we're going to bail out. It's like, you know, there's there's pandemonium <laughs> in the streets. There's just people that are hungry. You know, 
cruise liners are losing their jobs. Why don't we just send tons of money towards that? Wait, that, I mean, that, that sounds so par- like a parody. That could never happen, right? That would be the first people you'd, you'd – oh, sorry, I'm a little bitter about that still. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> Look it up if you know what I'm talking about. It's nonsense. But okay. Um, so the, the, you, you, there's limited resources and a lot of people with their hands out saying saying we, we need something. Um, trying to get from Blizzard's point of view, I think – they probably like agree with almost everything you say and just feel like they're at the capacity that they either can or want to produce these. Let, let's like, like try to package the idea, right? A little bit. Like we want smaller, discreet, more rapid cosmetic content that you play for and interact with the game with, like just more frequently. Like that's what it is like in a nutshell. I, I think they probably would say that they already feel like they are doing that. Now, it's not to the rate that you're saying. That's the major change you're saying. But they already outsource the skins. They they already are making... I mean, I'm sorry. No offense. I'm not... Uh, some of these skins are pretty nice. The gray McCree skin with the rename. <laughs> I, like, it's just not really doing it for me. So, like, I, I think, like, when there's something that feels like there's thought put into it, because that's, that's... I'm going to argue from both sides of the, the, the fence here. I think Blizzard often... Um, defends how long they take to do th- things because of how much tender loving care with every little thing, right? Like heroes in other games or characters in other games kind of get churned out because it's like, oh, we'll just take a piece of that, piece of that, mash it together, and here's the new guy. Like, it's, he's just the guy. And it's, he has lore and whatever, we don't care. Blizzard's not like that. They want everything to feel interconnected to the universe. So that's why they take extra time to like go through all the checks to make sure it's perfect to them, which also makes the development process longer and why Overwatch 2 is getting delayed. But uh, so what you're saying is kind of like ramp that up. And I agree, but they might like in order for them to pass all those checks, it's like, you know, they want McCree's name to be changed. So uh, that's probably why that got delayed. I mean, they already said that. For example, they had a, they went off and redid all the voice lines for the. I, I always say McCree. Like I just I've been Cassidy. talking about this game for five years. I, I don't know when I'm going to stop. Cassidy is his new name, but I, I'm struggling to remember it. I, I'm not even get into that whole situation. But um, they would have diverted. We're talking about you know resources, cruise liners. Okay, we're talking about re redistributing re- resources. That's where it went basically. Like whatever they had, whatever bandwidth they had, it was like we got to get this done first. And then we get kind of a mess skin that it like, so let's think of what like a peak skin would be um, a skin that like references other blizzard games or references other things in the lore. Like, uh, you know, it's kind of cute when, when, even though like the diva skin might not be that big of a deal, but uh, you know, it Jim feels Rainer like it's part of her character. Uh, that was uh, I think for, they saved those for BlizzCon. What am I talking about? No, those are, those are <laughs> premium price. Why would I even, why would I even suggest that? That's a huge paywall, but the free ones, you know, they feel like cute and connected to the, to the game. And and this one's trying to be, and a, a lot of them, I think uh, hit a little bit of a higher watermark with that. But anyway, so my TLDR is they, they are probably production wise. Like if we think of it away from the, the needs point of view and from the production point of view, how much resources should they take from Overwatch 2 to do that and when they're already outsourcing a lot of that? Like, I, like, I just don't know if there's a, a switch for them to flip necessarily. It's been flipped. Right. <laughs> the panic button has been set, and this is what we have. It's not good. It's, yeah, so I, I feel a little pessimistic, unfortunately, with that, um, if this truly is the best they can do. <laughs> um, so that's my little spiel. I'll let someone else talk now. So, Flash, I'll... do you want to relay to that first? Yeah. Yeah. So with the with the whole outsourcing thing, right? So if they are outsourcing it, as somebody who, you know, my entire YouTube is run by my editor or my channel manager retro and two editors um, for both my channels. Um, well, three now, I guess, but that's not the point. The point is, though, is with the whole outsourcing thing, the, the problem isn't necessarily anymore whether or not they can, like, flip the switch. The, the switch has already been flipped, as you said. It depends on if they're going to outsource even more. Like, do they, I mean, they have a team and, you know, I mean, I think Sam knows, didn't that guy like tweet you or DM you something that like they're not using anymore? The guy who made all the cool Halloween skins. So there are people that they have contact with that they could outsource more to. Obviously that comes at a cost, but I, and you know, this is me thinking, I guess, business wise here is I feel like the return that that cost would bring would be exponentially better than not doing it at all. It's the same thing as like, for me personally, I mean like, you know, I, I mean, this has been a topic I've had in the, my chat in the last week, is like my second channel operates at a loss, right? I pay more for editing than it, the, the channel makes. Yeah, that sucks, but in the long term though, people have started to 
uh, resonate with variety more. You know, people that get annoyed that, you know, I release some casual content on my main channel, whether it's like spectating bronzes, guess my SR, playing the tutorial again, uh, <laughs> whatever it is, and they get annoyed and they want their gameplay content, it's actually on the other one, right? So they still end up getting what they want and it satisfies people over time. It's more of an investment thing. It's something that long term has actually it's gone from like a huge negative to like not that much anymore. And at some point it will turn into a positive, which is a good thing. So what I think here is, is you know, if if they're already outsourcing it, is there an ability to up how much is being outsourced on that end? Obviously, some of that Blizzard part has to be done with like, you know, connecting the drops to Twitch and, you know, whatever registry comes along with that, finding the streamers for the event, etc., but honestly, a lot of that, I don't know about the Twitch part, but the finding streamers and like asking them to be a part of the event, I don't think is that difficult. Yes. Now, building a very diverse, comprehensive list and taking a lot of time into consideration with that, of course, is extra work. And and I think they've they've expressed that recently. It does take more time, which is good because they did a do good thing with it. Um, however, though, I don't like in my mind, I don't think that the amount of work required of that extra outsourcing is is that much of a difference um, on what they have because they're gonna outsource it anyways. It's more price. And it's like, is getting skins designed and sprays designed actually like that expensive, especially for a game that's a triple A title, you know? Uh, I don't know. Like, I, I feel like it's still like low lift. You know what I mean? Like it still doesn't require like Ooh. that much funding for it like it's still like obviously going to cost more but i feel like the return end is going to be so much bigger that it's worth the investment or at least giving it a shot you know mm -hmm. um but i don't disagree though they definitely don't want to take any more resources away from what they're currently doing and that's probably why the cast event took so long is is doing all the voice lines and stuff like that but like what was actually there though was not that impressive but if we could replicate that over and over and over and make it like a quick turnaround thing, it could then be very impactful. You know, it's kind of like quantity. I don't want to say quantity over quality. I want to say like it's more of like quantity over uh, how how much is put into it. It's almost like speed over how much is in the package, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, if they're only going to be small things anyways, then make them quick. So that they're they're rapid fire and it's constantly bringing people back in, constantly attention instead of like one big slow event, which honestly isn't hitting that hard anyways. I mean, if you go look at the numbers on Twitch right now, the, it's already dropped quite a bit since the first day a couple of days ago, which happens. But you know, it it's. I mean, you're hoping it would long term. It would yeah, you would at least you would hope it gets up, closer to the two weeks. You know, not like three yeah. days, four days. So I want to take this to Sam because uh, I know Sam has been. Hasn't said anything for a while. So Sam, what you what you feel in all this? Uh I I act I lie. He's right. I I think that it would definitely help for me. I'm not too invested in drops because I don't get them. But I mean, it's not, it feels bad. Oh yeah, shit, you're, you? you're YouTube. He's YouTube. Yeah, yeah, on YouTube. Primarily. Yeah, mostly. I only stream on Twitch when I want to practice and just like listen oh. to music and chill. I didn't see you um, recently. I was like, oh. Yeah, I just like whenever I'm tr I'm trying to. Well, I was trying to get back in peak form for when Overwatch Two comes out in the spring, but. Guess I jumped the gun a little bit, um, but yeah, I, I mean, obviously, I, I agree with that because you, you can't, like, we're in the age of the streamer, and the, the more stuff that you make to enable your streamers who are your advertisers, and you treat them like assets because that's what the most successful IPs of all time do. I'm, I'm, I, I wouldn't say Blizzard is well. They they certainly are not in the better half in terms of companies that work with content creators. I've seen you know on, on the front end and as we all know privately the back end too. Uh, although the community managers have always been great, I, I personally big, don't know any. W, but um, I've heard good things for the most part, and as well as J uh, Jay Nash was super nice, Molly was super nice. They always kick ass. They do a great job. Um, but it's it's just for me personally, I w if I had to choose one thing, I wouldn't do that because it's it's not a gimmick, but it's like uh, it, it it it's a boost to viewership, but it's. I don't know if authentic isn't the right word. I want my players to come back because my game experience is that good. Mm -hmm. Like that's another like, well, while that is a good idea and that needs to happen, I wouldn't put that at number one because it's not, it starts at the foundation, right? What's tough about this podcast right now is, is uh, 
the the best way to fix Overwatch in the long term permanently it's not like a one it's not like a snap your fingers do one thing no, like it's, no. it's a multi-step thing so like it's it's hard while that would be good personally I, that's not gonna be my answer as I'll, I'll talk about mine but actually i think i'm gonna throw you guys a curveball if it's gonna be just one big thing um but no i i like the idea i think that it definitely needs to happen it's just i wouldn't have that at number one i'd probably have that like number two or number number three on yeah. my list but it's still a very good idea it's it's on the chain of things that would need to come through to really help this game uh, stop, stop struggling and really just, you know, help out streamers who are the biggest assets and the, you, they are your advertisers. P players will go where their streamers play. That happens. Look at what happened to Among Us. Living proof of that, right? Literally, game has been out for three years and all of a sudden all the streamers are playing it and then look, we're just, pop what does what, what freaking Jay want? Hold on, this freaking... <laughs> He just messaged me, yo, are you at your computer? What a freaking idiot. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is probably already having a bad day. He wants to play something yeah. else. <laughs> he wants to kid, join dude? the call and cry again for yeah, a moment. Yeah, what's no, up? Uh, yeah, but so no, it's, it's a good idea. Go ahead, Sam. No, okay. you're good, you're good. Just good idea, but I, I'd have that number two or three on, on my list personally. Yeah, so I was just going to say, Sam brings up a couple of very good points, and that leads me to a question I was going to ask Flats anyways. Uh, because the thing is, a lot, a lot of times when we talk about ideas like this, when we say, you know, because we are obviously content creators, and when we talk, hey, how you know, what are these ideas that can help content creators? People often accuse us of like bias, right? Like, oh, well, yeah. you're saying it because it benefits you, it makes you money, but does it help the game? So, what would you say answer to someone who says that, Flats? Like, someone who says, well, will it actually help the game and the players, though? Well, let's talk about what we can do with the game versus the players, right? You're not getting new maps. It's not happening. You're not getting new heroes. It's not happening. Those are the number one and number two that players want. All of them. Casuals, competitive, Overwatch, whatever you like, top level to bottom level. That's what they want. Those aren't going to happen. No matter what. It's not on the table. So for me, I kind of look at it this way. We're currently at nothing, right? We're currently at nothing. We we're struggling, we're landsliding, and and I actually had a conversation with uh with Andy yesterday, and I, and you know, I talked about the why the the streamer drop thing uh, with the launcher, you know, mistake looks so bad, is because currently Overwatch is landsliding, and it's like when you're tumbling down a hill, you can't just immediately stop yourself. You have to start like grabbing onto a branch or a rock or putting your foot a certain way and stopping the slide, because currently we're fully sliding down, and every time another big mistake happens. It looks like, oh, well, Blizzard fucked up again. Here it goes. Like, another mistake, another mishap, whatever it is. The point is, being on that, the reason, the way we need to stop this is everybody has to be kind of, like, together, right? We are not going to get any big events. The only events we have been currently getting are the reused holiday events <laughs> and the occasional <laughs> drops. Well, we can't make more fucking holidays... So we made more drop events. <laughs> like, so like, you tell me what uh, other option we have if those are the only two things we're getting. Yeah, it does benefit me. I'm not going to pretend it doesn't. But the whole point is, is we those are the only events we get anyways. So if those are the ones that we have to work with, that's why it's choosing that for an option. If there's something else that we could get, by all means, sure. But don't forget, though, we're players too. If we do well... More streamers stream the game. For example, whenever XQC comes back to Overwatch, that the game just explodes for like the night. Whenever he sneaks in, always happens. Whenever streamers follow the games, the game does better. Apex Legends is a great example. Apex, their creators have held them accountable on a lot of things. On balance, when Seer got released, it was broken. Broken, most busted hero of all time. People were saying, is this the brig of Apex? Because he came out in season 10. Brig came out in season 10. But guess what happened? They nerfed him in the ground in two weeks. They gave him the... I, I, I swear, this is my conspiracy, is they had a patch ready to go when he got released. So he was still yeah. fun and strong. And then after a week, boom, put him where they think he's supposed to be. It wasn't enough. They realized it wasn't enough. And another week later, boom, another big patch. Put him down. Just just that was it. Like Was not going to let this guy ruin their game. Who held him accountable? Content creators. Pro players, because the here's the thing. You may not believe me, but I've noticed this, especially with the opportunity I had to build a balance patch and some fun stuff with Blizzard, which I'm excited for that. You know, whenever that gets to be like more talked about, I haven't been able to. All I was allowed to do was 
talk about with my ideas with chat and get feedback on them. So there's some cool stuff that's being worked on. But the thing I've learned from this is there's too many cooks in the kitchen if everybody's screaming at once. And the same thing happens in chat is if everybody's yelling their ideas, it doesn't work. What works better is when there's a smaller group that take the outside consideration and channel them into one voice. That's what the, the benefits of having streamers holding the game accountable, as well as pro players holding the game accountable, does. Because that's a person, a one tangible person, or a collective small group of tangible people that can have that dialogue and either get the feedback back from the team and be like, hey, the reason we can't do this is X, Y, Z, or the reason we haven't been doing that is X, Y, Z. And you can have that conversation instead of that team just yelling into the void of thousands of people that are screaming back. Like, because that thousands of people screaming back is almost impossible to listen to. Like, there's so many voices at once. So having your content creators do well is a big thing already. Most games have figured that out. And what I mean by choosing this one drop event over anything else, yes, it would benefit me. Yes, it would benefit other streamers. But we don't have any other really options on the table at the <laughs> moment. So that's why I've chose this more than anything. If you got something else, sure. But I don't think that we can go and, and propose something at this point. So, yeah. Mm. Obviously, we'll, we'll, we'll do well from it, but it's not just us. It's the same way it's been doing, just increasing the frequency. So to try and summarize, Flats, and you tell me if you agree with this or not, you're, you're kind of saying that right now, we don't have we are, our options are very limited. We're not getting any substantial content, and content creators are kind of the biggest crutch we can rely on. So empower them, and they will, in turn act as kind of voices of the community and go the kind of the bridge between the devs and the and the community right so they'll reinvigorate the community and then give that feedback back to the devs is that a fair summary i wouldn't say the word reinvigorate i'd say they'd hold on to what's left um and All like right. <laughs> keep them like it's like sand you know the more hands you have around the sand like less will sl slip out but like it's still gonna slip out you know like <laughs> i'm loving the metaphors today but i'm a little bit concerned they're all like jungle peril themed I'm not sure what uh, what Flats has been up to recently, but... It's been okay, a weird week. So, <laughs> it's been a weird one. Okay, well, either Samir or Frida, do you guys have anything else to sa say on that idea? Anything else you want to feed back more on? Yeah, um, it, go ahead, Sam. Go ahead. No, you go. You're good. Well, I, I had uh, two routes I think I could go. One to the streamer point of view, and then the other is to balance especially it being an issue when we know Overwatch 2 is coming it's a different format so uh i'll do the first one first about about streamers um whenever we're talking to flats it's nice because we get like a, a boots on the ground twitch streamer um a lot of our friends don't stream on twitch as svb does i guess but uh the our, our little group we're mostly on we bias towards youtube a little more i guess um and there, there's a term i want to pick out of your speech from like 10 minutes ago that you said that when we do have a drop like this, there's exponential viewership growth. And the trouble with that being a term is that uh, if people don't know, exponential is when a number's multiplied on itself. So like if we're triple views now as to January or, or vice, whatever it was that Flat says, triple views now, uh, that's a good thing. But I think from Blizzard's point of view, you're multiplying because it's a multiplier if you're multiplying a low number it's not as impressive as when you multiply a high number so when you look at the big graph of like uh overwatch at, let's let's just at, oh, i'm trying to see my my hands what the viewer sees Th this is yeah, you're good, you're screen, good. right okay okay <laughs> overwatch at launch 2016 breaking record it's at the top of my camera this might even be cropped i don't know i don't know where SVB's no, got you're it, there okay? you're there this is interest level of uh, 2016 here okay and then we've got all the years going by and it's going to go down and down like sam always shows shows these steps yeah like right? child pulling no, out no, pulling no, no, it up no, no, right no. now yeah, yeah. <laughs> now we're like yes yeah, now we're like i was going pulling that up right okay we're here and the flats is looking flats is like zooming into this section of, of the graph and he's like well january or like one month was like this and this month is three times that well look at that look it's it's three times you see what i'm saying so from their point of view i'm trolling you a little bit in order to get to the heart of the matter which is our game's not free to play our game's not free to play so they don't really gain anything out of any of that and the i think We've already talked about this subject so much that I, I yeah. try not to regurgitate these points because you can see the last episode that we, uh, we're we all on again to discuss that if you want our thoughts on free-to-play. But <laughs> um, 
I think the positive feedback loop we see in other games are express expressly because it is free to play. So that constant stream of consumers is important to the business model and is the major upside, especially from a creator's point of view, that all of the things flat said is because it's free to play. And I, as far as I know, Apex is uh, pretty well received yeah. right now and the devs have to keep putting stuff into it. Overwatch is a completely different perspective. So anything that they do do for this game is resources that could be spent towards the next game where the real stuff is going to happen, which makes me wonder, and I, and I don't mean to uh, Gordian not the entire conversation here, but to what level sh is it a, a good decision for Blizzard to just cut ties to this game altogether and do even less? Because they're barely doing anything now. It, and it, like, like, I almost feel like that's already been their strategy, right? Because they're saying, if our new game either needs the sequel or a new business model, then we might as well focus towards that. Like, like I, I don't think they're gaining anything out of skins monthly or even Twitch viewers. Even if it was like 50,000 Twitch viewers again, do they gain literally anything from that? Uh, uh, like, like you could say players, but like anybody who's play who like is pl anyone in that probably has already bought the game. It sold so much that most people own it. I feel like, and the game goes on discount and I, I don't hear them talking about breaking sales records anytime soon. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't heard from the earnings report that our, our Overwatch loot boxes popping off. I don't think so. Right. So like if none of these, if all these revenue streams have dried up for them, th they would need an order of magnitude. There's another math term for you. An order of magnitude, more like interest. It, it would have to be like, I, I don't know, 10, uh, like maybe even more, maybe even more, like uh, somewhere between like 10 and 50 XQCs in this game <laughs> to be like, well, here's all the people who didn't buy the game yet to come buy it. So, so I guess I'm saying we're screwed. Right? We're, we're screwed until it's, <laughs> it goes free to play. I, I don't have a better answer than that because uh, th th if they don't see the incentive for them to do it, I don't see them investing in this first game. And then the second point of course was all the balance considerations. I get a little funny with this because although um, I like the game being tuned, What's it getting tuned for? We already know it's going to 5v5. So I guess maybe we'll just jump to what my suggestion is. Can we just yeah, rip this band-aid off already? Yeah, like, right, I, on, I, I didn't, I didn't, come, here play, I didn't yeah. come here with a, a planned suggestion yet, but I, I just stumbled so onto it. Why can't we just do 5v5? That's my, my, that'll be my point. We can get to you that You want to go 5v5 right now? Screw it. Who cares? Who cares? I Who cares? The game's it's already it's doing that. If, if, if it doesn't work, they can change it back. Whatever. Whatever. Like, like. Why it would be better to test this now. Actually, you're things. right. Hold on. I think you're. I think you're actually onto something. Onto something. Might, Hold you, on. You, this man is onto something. <laughs> let me. Can I chime in on that, Frida, real quick before you go into point? Is that okay? I'm, I'm done. Uh, I, I'll just look oh, at okay. the floor. There we go. That's my, I, um, that's my argument. Tea, I, I haven't really talked about this too much, but I think it's safe to say that this entire community is incredibly concerned that 5v5 is going to be dog shit. Oh, yeah. So 100%. I think, I, I think I've said that. Bingo before. board. A lot. That's, I, I, I wasn't going to say it, but that's just for you, SPB. But yeah, no, like we, like, Flats, <laughs> we talked about this while ago. Like, we have to test it. At this point, SPB pu pulled up that graph. Uh, I'll, put, chart, I'll pull it up is, again. I'll which is one again. of the worst charts I've seen it. That's bad, boys. That's five is, straight can you explain, years. Can you explain what this is to the viewers? So this is chart right is, it's, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's in, it's in chat too, Flats. This chart is Google Trends and it's the term Overwatch. So what that'll tell you is how interested the world is in, in Overwatch based off search results and on the internet, especially in the gaming industry, like th that's very important, right? Because the more people that are searching your game, it's a great way to gauge Perfect interest changes. in the game. Overwatch, is the only chart you can compare it to other titles too. It is the only game of the major f games that have come out in the last five or six years that have has not been able to beat its previous year's peak once. Not a single time, which this just goes to show really, really poor management and really, really poor execution because we are even in peak COVID, the only major title, the first shooter to win game of the year in 15 years to not have a better year than the previous year for five or six straight years. And now you can't go up every year. It's not a problem, right? No one's perfect. You can't, it, 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 growth stops at some point. But to not go up once in five or six years, that tells you that the top level management is not doing this right. Their, their order of priorities are wrong. So honestly, Frito, we have nothing to lose. I, don't, I would rather try 5v5 now and see if it's okay, see if it's good, 
then then wait for Overwatch 2 to come out and have them uh, look I, I don't enjoy I don't think any of us enjoy coming on here and being like oh Blizzard they just mess in this other like no one enjoys that I, w I would rather say con I want to say congratulations to my friends rather than I'm sorry or like it's tough you know like who wouldn't want to do that I, I am so looking forward to the day where I can come on here and be honest and say I am so thrilled with how good Blizzard's done I I am I am Foaming at the mouth for the day that that for that to happen because I love this game. You guys love this game. We all want to see it, but th this is terrible. And I, I honestly think that might not be a bad idea. Like Frito, what what's the harm in 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 a one week being like, yo, like we're gonna put this current game. This actually was gonna be my point too. Is like stuff stuff like this. Like we we can't create more content. So why don't we just look for efficient ways to spice up the game and just use what's already there, right? Like. 5v5 would not be hard to do. You wouldn't have to really change the matchmaker. You wouldn't really have, you just have to remove a player. I'm sure that's not too difficult, right? I mean, I'm, I'm sure in the code, like there's not some crazy thing to do. Why not? You're, you're not doing sh freaking jack shit anyway. Pardon my French, but screw it and do it. That, that's screw it and do it. That's my old saying in diving just to get, to get over the fear of trying a new dive or doing like a front double or triple or something. I don't even know. Screw it and do it. So Blizzard, screw and do it. Why not? Let's 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 spice things up. Do it for a week. You know, so, I was thinking my idea was um, aside. I'll talk about Brig in a bit, but well, as, we'll get as, to your idea. Don't don't spoil it. Don't spoil yeah, it. We'll yeah, yeah, idea. yeah, unless, unless yeah. Unless you want to okay, drop yeah, it now. Yeah, if you guys talk about Frito's point first, I'm not, I'm I'm I'm, I'm yeah, this we'll is ending round all three. Yeah, yeah, save the juice. So I want to quickly yeah, devil's advocate well. a little bit. Because obviously now the Frito is the one giving the point. I have to take over devil's Keep advocate responsibility. Is frank, like, so, and then I want to hear Flats' opinion on this as well. So let's say from the Blizzard POV, they might say, okay, Frito, sure. You might say, what do we have to lose? But is, 5v5, is the change to 5v5 not one of the big selling points of Overwatch 2 that alongside the big package is what will convince people to buy the game? And if you give people 5v5 now, then all that's left is the PvE. And they'll say, well, will people buy it just for the PvE? And there goes the money chain again. So, so what do you think? Well, 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 yeah, the, here's the problem. PvP should be free to play anyway, so. There's, that's there's... true, that's true. Although we, we haven't really, I, I want to mention that we haven't really heard them reiterate that point since they made it's gonna it in the first BlizzCon. It's going to happen, yeah. 100%. There's no it way it doesn't. It has to happen, right? I mean, well, we say there's no way. Go ahead, Frito, sorry, but it's Blizzard. We, we don't know. Yeah, they have two... Um, competing ideologies here, and we actually don't know what how they currently feel about anything because they don't really talk. They don't really explain things. They just give you like a a window through another window of a whisper like of a someone that said something once. It's like yeah, it's like it's a distorted image of what they're even thinking about doing, and maybe we'll do a thing. Like so, it, it's hard to know what they actually stand firm with especially when there's been so much leadership change. So I, I think we are sitting here with the information we're assuming that they have said, but I mean, they promised Warcraft three reforged would have all these certain things that it came out <laughs> yeah, different. Like like, or whatever. And then it never was. Yeah. Right. So uh, I, I don't know if things have changed. I think leadership change indicates that maybe some, they have got some bad news or good news. I, I, who knows what, what uh, is different, but so let me try to chart the, dichotomy here that they're dealing with internally with this on one hand activision blizzard does a box product model that they like to call uh you may be familiar with this with a very successful game called call of duty with activision that comes out every year they have three different dev studios out and they just keep churning out ba -da 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 -da. so this is more like what flats is saying is like just just get it out there who, who cares it's like we'll, we'll we'll play it for a few months we'll enjoy it and and, and overall though the cod community will tell you some, something different it's lived for, I don't know, what is it, 100 years? Like, it's been out forever, and they've been doing that for a long time, and uh, people hop off the train, hop back on the train, and, and people, they like that rate of content overall. It diminishes the quality and the shine, for sure, but um, that works for them. But uh, they normally didn't give stuff for free. Any DLC, extra packages, map packs. They had a whole streamline of content for COD throughout its life cycle, but then they got this Warzone thing that they took a punt on, kind of. Their first uh, Battle Royale blackout was, was kind of a failure. Yeah, it was nice. They're like, let's try this again. They made Warzone. All of a sudden, it's making all this money. They're like, oh, yeah, free-to-play, COD Mobile. So they also understand free-to-play as well. And, and those are the, they're, they're the two things. Okay. That's the context of Activision Publishing over there. Blizzard has a guy like Jeff Kaplan come out on stage and looking back at it now, says what I think 
was the headlines he was hoping to read reviewing his con let me explain what i mean he said we're going to redefine the sequel what, what does that mean but, but, redefine it you, you know like a really good headline that i'm reading about myself like that, that no no offense jeff but that the, looking back that's kind of how it sounds because if you want people to say redefine the sequel you'll just say how much great value the game is like say what it actually is and we'll be like oh yeah that's a whole new thing that's you're redefining the sequel that's the thing i should say about you not that you say about you because <laughs> i don't know what it even does yet uh, you, you got something sam i'm, I'm uh no, no, know. you're just completely right. It's just okay. it's the same thing with Blizzard, where it's it's just low. It's all image. It's like it's they they focus on the wrapper of the candy, not the candy bar. Go ahead. Okay, so uh, I'm I'm getting to a point. All this will come together, I promise. So, in that redefine the sequel thing, they're saying we will update Overwatch One with Overwatch Two. But here's the problem, Blizzard: free to play games already exist and get live updates now. <laughs> so what is the benefit to the consumer for me to wait for the next box product? I understand that you normally do COD, and if you get the update, you gotta buy the new game, and it sucks that you have to buy the next Space Marine to play Space Marine 2 with your friends, and we're gonna redefine that. Who asked for that? We just have free to play games we all can play now. That is not a big selling point. What's a big selling point is here's all the improvements that come along with this other game we made that is awesome, that is going to sell a lot of copies, and we funded it in a really fair way. Isn't that great? It's like, I think that I, I sound like I'm angry because I kind of am, but their <laughs> messaging is just so bad on this. Like, they, I think they truly wanted to do a good thing, but their perspective on things this had listen we talk we've had a it's lot of communication OA. with them back and forth okay this isn't the first time that they seem completely clueless why their perspective doesn't land with anybody <laughs> like like that's not acceptable okay like like who did you screen who what what creator did you like put this past to see if that's a good idea to, to that's going to resonate and get people applauding and, and like no it doesn't make any sense okay so calming down for a second i do have a point in here somewhere they have to decide great. they have to decide whether they're they're merging the games together and if they are it's got to go free to play basically because yeah otherwise you're just holding updates hostage until you fi finish the rest of it and we know you know this strategy because you have warzone already <laughs> it's as simple as that other otherwise it feels you are starving us so that we can pay for the things later it's like but that's not redefining it you you re redefined it to be something that's bad that's what you did yeah, yeah. You redefined <laughs> it to be like a new way to fail oh congratulations Facts. yeah uh i i can't i i've uh so much emotion has just so, raged through me here that i don't know if i've, I've finalized my point the point is they 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 yeah, it doesn't seem like a benefit yet to us. And and I want all those updates to come, but like if you're not going to give them now, like I don't know, whatever. I've lost the plot. Go ahead, Flats. Well, you want yeah, it for yeah. one or two for your play? Okay, so here's the reason why I argue free to play seems to make like what what's the alternative to free to play? No, I'm with Overwatch you on free to play, but I'm, I mean, like, oh. you want Overwatch 2 free to play or like current Overwatch free to play? Well, well, hold on one sec. That those again redefine the sequel. Like it doesn't make any sense. Like, like so, this is what they had said at BlizzCon years ago that mm -hmm. the updates to PvP would come to come for to current Overwatch players for free anyway. So you wouldn't even have to buy Overwatch Two. That is that is good in a way. That's like really fair. But what are they doing with the sticker price of the already, what is it? Because it's like, I see it $15 all the time. They're barely bucks, selling it yeah. now, right? They're barely selling it now. It's 20 bucks now. So I, I feel like they're jumping over backwards to try to do some like super fair business model when in, when there's like people paying $300 for Valorant skins and happy as a clam. Like, like I just, I don't, I don't get it. I, I actually don't get it. It's like, make I, your game I think good I understand what you're saying, actually. For it. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I'm ranting myself to oblivion here. No, yeah, it was honestly my, my, great. My, my mm -hmm. problem was, how could they not make it free to play if all the Overwatch 2 stuff comes free anyway? Like, it just doesn't make any sense. Their leadership doesn't they want know that big doing. hit. Well, well, yeah, it's like, if we sold, if we sold 50, doing. 60 million copies, how many new people are going to buy Overwatch 2 just, you know, if they can already access Overwatch 2 PvP with the copy that they already owned? 
like, okay, let, let me go back to the box model approach, okay? So there, there's a, a, a struggle with terminology here. When a new COD comes out, often it's a different dev team on a different engine, and a lot of people have different preferences on, I like Treyarchs, I like this, this one plays a little faster, this one has better time to kill, these guns do this, they have zombies, whatever. Like, it's a different flavor of developer on a different engine often. A different engine, okay, you, you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. It's slightly different, it's like specialized to them, whatever that means, okay? With Overwatch, we all know it's one live service game. So where's that distinction? And, and I suppose when I say try out 5v5, really what I mean is if we're going to have beta, like and this gets to a larger point, if Overwatch 2 5v, Overwatch, I, I try to do say this, Flats, that I think ho hopefully helps my terminology here. Overwatch 2, what we should say really is Overwatch 2 is the PvE game and mm -hmm. the updates should be Overwatch 2.0, Overwatch PvP 2.0. So, so I'll try to say that from now on. When I mean 2.0, what I mean to say is 5v5, all the tank reworks, push new game mode, and all the other updates that we expect. Scoreboard, different different modes, mm -hmm. like more, all the new hero, all the new content, like lots and lots of stuff should be in that is the point. Um, if they're beta testing that early next year, why not start to integrate it earlier? I, I guess is my point. Like what's, you're not, you're not sealing it off on the next game anyway. So you see my point? Like, like yeah. any changes you see, you know, or like, like, like they've shown us not much so far, but there's a lot more that we're expecting. Any changes that they put, they are starting to show you in Overwatch League next year. Why, what's the benefit of waiting till the PVE Overwatch 2 releases? If all that stuff is coming in a drop, when the, that game's out. Like, I just don't understand why there has to be this, such a gated cutoff. And this is where I get to the, you re redefine the sequel to mean something bad. No other game does this. Yeah. Like, it's just like, it's a live game. Here's a new thing. Maybe we'll beta test it. Now it's out. Like, that's it. That's it. There's no complicated extra steps in yep. order to get there. And your expectations are set immediately. So they really screwed themselves with this redefine the sequel thing because everyone understands, you know, the COD, as a game, it's a thing. You play it there, and then there's a, a and there's Warzone. We understand those are two different things. It feels like you have a Warzone, and we're asking, well, why are you not updating it until ten years from now? Uh, okay. Uh, well, I, hope I, I, I want to quickly. In there whatsoever. No, you're right. I mean, yeah, yeah, I think it was beautiful, and I I think all of us already I can tell really really agree. And I personally am like I think that was poetry in motion. Uh, but I do want to have to devil's advocate. I do want to try and present something for perhaps a reasoning. And again, like I said, although I said you know. Well, they're trying to incentivize people to buy it. And, you know, the counterpoint is, well, it's not, you don't have to buy it anyways. Maybe what they're saying is, well, would people be hyped if it was just PVE that we release at the end? Can we propel the changes that come with the, the care package that comes with Overwatch 2 to convince people to simultaneously buy the PVE as well? Because let's say they give us 5v5 now and we get a, a sort of medium term boost. Again, keeping that big big graph in mind that we have on screen. Maybe we get a medium term boost and we end up a little bit closer to the peak. But if we don't end up at Thank the peak, you. then kind of the whole thing falls apart perhaps, right? The whole Overwatch 2 idea falls apart because if this doesn't get us back to the top, all of it was for nothing. We just blew our own game up for nothing. So are they saying what we want to do is actually, it's not even about we're going to give you the content anyways. It's about creating one moment of hype that everyone's like, Overwatch 2 out now. 5v5, PvE, everything, go, 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 bye, 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 bye. And that propels us back to a new height. Is that the they thing? They want the big hit. That's what it is. And that, yeah, I'm going to take I the flat that now. is it. Yeah. Because that yeah, you're... They wanna, they, you go ahead. You go. You, you, for your thing, which you're, you're right about, they'd have to do the game right. Like, if the game sucked as they were doing the 2.0 and, and developing it and updating it, it wouldn't it wouldn't go anywhere. You know, like they'd, they'd, If they'd have to be like Apex. Like, Apex sucked. And then they worked on the game hard over time and it brought the game back to life. And now it's considered actually, I think it's past Fortnite and Warzone, actually. I, I saw something about the other day that it's now the number one game on Twitch, uh, the number one battle royale. Um that's the problem though, is do they even trust themselves to build the game from the bottom up instead of having a massive boom at the top and then fall over time? I think they'd rather have a big boom and then fall over time than start from the bottom and build it back up, you know? I, I think Sam, it just means think? we're screwed then, okay. unfortunately. We're <laughs> screwed. Um, um I, I, I think what Blizzard needs to understand is that 
Flat said they're going for the big hit. So we're gonna, in terms of baseball terms, you want, do you want to know what wins you baseball games and makes, makes your team good? Getting on base, not swinging for the fence every at-bat. What they're, what they're doing right now is, is, is stupid. Moneyball, one of the greatest storylines of all time, by the way. If you haven't seen Moneyball, go read it. One of the <laughs> most fascinating, really cool sports stories ever. Awesome. Loved it. Um, but look, it's, it's, w- the, the model right now is silly. And it is terrible, and it is bad. I, I think Frito hit the nail on the head. It makes no sense to put a chokehold on this IP. Like, like first of all, let's let's talk about it. Overwatch Two did it need to happen? Realistically, no. Could could it work? Absolutely. So I'm not trying to to shit on the whole idea of Overwatch Two. I think it can work. But in what universe is it a good idea for your business model to be? Let's effectively stop doing anything for our current product and we're just going to wait and hold out you think your average gamer out there is going to respect that decision and give you the time of day my biggest problem with blizzard is that they have completely lost touch with modern day gamers this leadership team lives in 2008 back when you could get away with shit like that they don't understand Modern day gaming and what it takes to be at the top. And that chart tells me that, right? That chart, a five, six straight down your straight plummet. That tells you that they don't understand their consumers. They don't understand anything about the experience of gaming nowadays. And they're making no effort to get those players back. So when, when you go to this model, kind of like Frito said, like it, it doesn't make sense that this stuff needs to wait. It doesn't. And like you, you can't have a healthy, thriving product, and you can't gain the respect because here, here's the reality of what gamers are nowadays. When we were younger, like a couple, like maybe ten years ago, I, I would say there weren't a, there were guys our age that were gaming, right? But not nearly as much, right? But now I'm older people than older, you guys, so. yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right, Uncle Frito, Uncle Frito. Okay, okay. But um. No, the average age has increased, basically. Is the average saying. age has increased. These people have jobs. They work hard. They want to come home and they want to spend time with their friends. Like it's it's like that for my friend group, right? Like all my buddies moved moved to you know one moved to Pittsburgh and one's moving somewhere else, you know, and they were working and we barely have time to play together anymore. And they all quit Overwatch a while ago because they were just like, dude, Same. like the experience sucks. Ranked ranked is shit. No one wants to try together. The experience is bad. No we have no. a limited, yeah, yeah. We we have a limited time to play together. I, I'm sorry, this is just not worth me sinking my time into because I have a limited time and I I come home from work stressed out already. Like I want to feel like I'm progressive with something, and like I that that's the number one thing that I I think that leadership needs to really look at. It's it's you you guys have just lost complete and utter touch with everyone. You're in your little Southern California bubble. You don't know shit about what people that across the world want about their experience, anything. And if you want to make a difference, you got to start opening up and listening because I watched every single content creator and their mother from the day this game came out, tell you directly that they were thrilled with how good the game experience was in October. That we were all so damn proud of you. And the first thing you do is take that and stuff it straight down the goddamn toilet. What the fuck? Are you kidding me? It'll How make me dare cry. you? It'll make me cry. How fucking dare you? I'm sorry, man. I look. I've tried to hold my emotions in about this shit for years. I have been one of the loudest people about it, and I got my yeah, ass so crucified give you one warning. Shut the fuck for up. that. Just for you guys to take everyone's effort, everyone's time, the Overwatch League's time, your your players' time, and you throw it straight down the shitter. That is so disrespectful. It is unbelievable. And what do you do now? You don't release shit. You don't say a word to anybody, and you watch as the whole industry and your competitors blow your ass out of the water. You are worse than BlackBerry when they came out and they said, oh, well, our phone, when the iPhone's about to kick their ass, you know what they said? They literally said this. This is the dumbest shit I've ever heard in my life. They said, oh, well, on our phone, you, you can't surf the web on our phone. It's for business because we're BlackBerry. Don't you know we're BlackBerry? You can't use a, our phones for leisure because we're business, and we're the fuck are they now that, five that bucks is a share five bucks a share it is <laughs> something like that fucking believable sorry i just went off i had just it was built up my bad <laughs> johnny is walking no, i'm sorry 
Like, yo, bro, I'm sorry. Bro, I'm, I'm, I'm good, I'm sick of it. I'm good. I'm good. I just, I just, fucking hell. There's been a sorry. lot of yelling today. All right. Yeah, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just, look, man, I'm so sick of seeing these fucking arrogant, and there's no other word for it, because literally, you guys all saw it. You saw how great the feedback was to them. We were so happy and so proud, and I felt like I was proud to be an Overwatch player and a streamer. I was so proud of them, man. And then they just shit on us. And it's like, it, it, it goes back to the point. They need to get out of their bubble, drop the ego, start treating your content creators like assets, and understand that the first step to improving, I've had to do this in my life myself, like, like I spiraled out of control this past year. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't, I barely fucking ate, right? I was stressed out and I blew up because of it, right? The first step to getting better is addressing that you have a problem, right? Real. And that's what I want Blizzard to do. We do, we do not want to sit here and fucking flame them. I don't want to do that. I want to say congratulations. I want to compliment them. I, that's, that's what we want. But they have to address the fact that there is clearly no communication. The people up top have no idea what they're doing. The chart reflects it. Everything reflects it. How do we get better? And we have to do it together. That's why I'm glad to hear that you're doing that balance patch, Flats. That's, that's effort. That's, that's understanding that your creators can help you. Thank and you. it's, Good it's just, three tough man, day I, today. I, I don't even know. I, I just went off on a huge tangent. I'm sorry, but it's just, it's, it's the core issues. It's the substance. This company only focuses on the candy wrapper. Like, oh, we're going to sell you this pretty candy bar and you open it up and it's fucking sour. And it's like, why would anyone ever buy that candy bar again? That's what Overwatch is like. It's a pretty wrapper with dog shit inside. There you go. SVB bingo board. Um, but it, it, that's just the reality. And that's, I'll, I'll talk about my point a bit, but that, theme thematically that has just been so true for overwatch and the gaming industry is fed up with it it shows in the numbers and everyone fucking knows it i, I wanted to say jump in quick though because I, I do know at least someone on the blizzard team is going to watch this and see how we're, we're shouting oh, absolutely. At the sorry i'm sorry look we we, we want to love you guys uh, I'm, I'm trying not to be a dick but it just, Andy, just it ain't personal bro i promise it ain't personal we, we, we love you but it's it's tough love that's how i was raised so i'm sorry i'm I, yeah yeah I, I was just gonna highlight a few positives that i think like uh chart the right path and um a few of them has been i think aaron keller although he hasn't said much yet I think he's in control of the destiny of what that new leadership looks like. And it and I'm seeing like signs of positivity. Let's put it that way. I also think um a lot of the moves the Overwatch League has done, for example, putting a lot of people in position um is, is a positive over there in order to influence the uh um the format they have. Uh, it's like like I'm I'm wondering like if the same kind of redesign, like Overwatch League's more public for us. Like we don't really know the inter workings of the what's the well, leadership structure like in in team four so that's why i kind of using it as an example but like uh i think everything mr x has done uh from what i can tell is what i would have done in the same position and then they like get him another job and they, they get this guy another job and it's like, I'm like okay yeah not in long so if we could get that same kind of thing for team four but it's just hard because we don't have the transparency to know how that that works so anyway but the point i was trying to make is you've got time to write the ship and a good sign is we got to delay this thing, <laughs> like, but, but it brings us to the point that we get to this podcast where we're like, okay, delay. Yes. Because if it's not figured out by now and something's wrong, you got to redesign something. You got to re rethink how you're doing. You got to fix some serious problems. Go do that. Do not release a bad product. That would be really, really bad. Mm -hmm. However, it's, we're not the ones who told you to stop covering your live service game while you redefine the sequel to make some an update for free that people normally get for free and free to play games anyway it's like it's like what, what it, it, nobody told you to do that so you got to somehow square that circle and figure out how you're going to solve that and um you know we started the conversation saying like well maybe more frequent uh uh, uh cosmetic events and twitch drops things like that okay that's good i don't know like like other other events other things that like your community team could do whether it's it's you know i think i saw sammy you know, he's in like some tournament or something why isn't blizzard getting hands on with that why aren't we repurposing the overwatch league for those types of things and then my point i guess to like take a step back with 5v5 is like i want us to feel like we're on the journey towards overwatch too svb makes a good point that they want the the peak of uh, interest comes Overwatch 2, but if you have in even a little bit of idea that you're going to make it free to play anyway, and you have to delay till that, like the, I, I don't, I don't know, I don't have this, the answer, but I don't know how the game. I, I, we haven't seen a game survive through a thing like that. Like that just doesn't happen. Other than like 
I, I guess like they remaster Modern Warfare 2 or something. I'm trying to think, think, think like a game that people, mm-hmm. some people do go back to play old COD games, but there's like thousands of people playing. It's like, you always want the new hotness. So it's like, if you're not going to declare this is the new hotness, you're, you're declaring that Overwatch 1 is basically dead. It's like 6v6, that's dead. It's like, well, how, good luck, Frito. Go make a guide on a game where all the meta is going to be entirely different. And <laughs> like, what, what am I supposed to teach you about this? You, you, you have two takes now, you won't in yeah. tomorrow. Like, like, so how do I teach anything about the game right now? It's impossible. So th- that's why I feel like I want to feel like I'm on the journey towards it start implementing it um anyway okay um you know they, they have moves to make basically is the point they have like a blank slate at the moment that they're, they're working off almost nothing so anything positive would feel good right now mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. flats well, actually I'll, I'll before i quickly go to flats i just want to remind everyone that we will talk your ideas at the end of this so if you guys we've kind of already had such wide sweeping and amazing ideas i'm really really happy but if you guys have any ideas drop them in chat and flats, maybe you can let me know from your chat as well, sure. or tell them to come drop it in my chat, and we'll discuss them at the end. But now I want to head over to flats. Flats, feedback on that idea. Before you go too far, I do want to say something real quick. First off, Overwatch League killed it this year. Did great, yes, awesome. Out. Their content always do. They were, which by the way, we had monthly skins from Overwatch League. I just <laughs> want to put that out there, so it's possible. They always do such a good job. One. Two. No, Overwatch League is amazing in terms of its production. Two. There is... I w- used to work in Overwatch League. I'm technically... I am a part of it, you know, signed with Mayhem. So I have to be careful with the words I'm going to say. But I will say... I have very little belief that the old heads that originally like started the idea of Overwatch League with this home and away format 32 40 game season first year BS were the people who suggested going to a tournament format i think the tournament format suggestion were younger new blood more in touch people whether that whether it was casters whether it was players, maybe parts of the staff, whether it's from production to management, people that were in touch with esports, period, are the people who made that suggestion and pushed hard for it. Because the home and away format was just sleeper. No, There's no reason to care about game six when there's 28 of them. Like, there's no reason, you know what I mean? Unless you're watching the top two teams or the number one team or whatever your favorite team is. Which, to be honest with you, the league's way too small to only be focusing on your very small fan base. Because each team has a very small fan base. It's way better to look at the overall picture of Overwatch League and grab everyone than your just small fan base. And trust me, I have experience dealing with people like that. Um... So, to make your point, though, is if Overwatch League listened and made those decisions to whoever made them, I think Blizzard should highly consider doing the same thing because there's no way in hell there's nobody in there that doesn't know. I refuse to believe it. I've worked in business, big business and corporate. There is absolutely some younger or, or more in tune or very smart people that have suggested and pushed for this but they don't have upper level support. I don't know where it's from. I obviously not a part of it. I don't work there. I can't explain it. But I, if you've worked in corporate before, there is there's there's just there's just zero percent chance there's nobody in there that doesn't know what they're talking about. It's zero. There's it's not possible. Someone knows. Maybe a few people know, and maybe even outside of that few people, there's a larger group of people that like at least agree or like, hey, we sh- we could try that. Like that sounds like a good idea. But something's blocking it. Well, leadership, right? That's the word. Bingo. But like, I, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, just yeah. open that I, the mind up a little bit because we're stuck, declining. Sam's pulling literally the stats. Like, the data don't lie! You know, like... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So like, I think I, Overwatch I say, is a good example. I think John, John getting promoted to the commercial, like, head of Overwatch is so big. Big, yeah, it's I, true. I, like, I from the league. Like, they, they honestly... Like, because... You want to know how you know the league people are incredibly good at their jobs when they can have such a good year 
when there's scraps from the game. Like, it, it, what Overwatch League has managed to accomplish the last two to three years is incredible. Like, they are working with nothing because of leadership, and they still kill it every damn year. Those people put those people in charge of the whole damn game. That's why I'm really optimistic about John becoming that commercial lead. They John's need great. younger go getters like him who get it. That man gets it. So let him like look. I don't mind the old leadership, but the, the, the problem is like they they need to listen to these people. Like you can stay in your position, but you gotta let these go getters who understand this generation get after your IP and let them run with it. They know what they're doing. They kick ass from scraps on the dinner table. Let them run with it. Let them freaking run with it, for God's sake. I like John a lot. Uh, I like him a lot. Yeah. I, I don't think I've ever told this story on stream, so I hope I don't get in trouble for it. Um, <laughs> but to be honest, it's been a long enough time that I think the the stuff has expired for this part. But uh, when I was very new in Overwatch League, I was you know college graduate, starry-eyed, knew all about Overwatch, all about Overwatch League. You know, like I was like, I was I was still like a like you know, like well into top 500 for a long time player. And what I think it was my second week. Uh, we had a meeting where uh, Overwatch League executives came to Gillette in Foxborough. And, you know, it's, it's, you know, the Patriots home. They have these big, huge conference rooms that have like massive portraits of like Brady and like Belichick and the rings and the, like the trophies. It's, it's sick. But, you know, it's these massive conference rooms, and I got to sit in on it on one of the things we were talking about. It was something very specific in terms of, you know, branding and selling merch. You know what I mean? Like it was like very business oriented. And there's something that was there was something that was not being talked about that was just like a no brainer to me. And so, me being the the new kid in the corner, was like, can I ask something? And I asked John this very specific question and I got the biggest death stares from around the room from all the old <laughs> fucking, you know, executives that have been there fucking 20, 30 years are like, Oh, this stupid kids talking. And Joe was like, no, actually that's actually a great point. Like we, and he like went into like this whole thing of like 20 minutes talking about like, well, that's something they actually want to accomplish and they hadn't really been able to, but they were trying to this reason. And that was actually something they wanted to like experiment later on. But they hadn't actually brought that up yet. And it was it was great, you know. And I, I appreciated him talking about that so much because I learned a bunch. And actually, the rest of the room learned a bunch because there were things that they hadn't known and they hadn't talked about before and never looked at it that way. And, you know, it was something, you know, it's something that like they could have just brushed me off, you know, but he took the time to explain it. And not only did I learn, but they learned some stuff as well because they thought they knew everything but didn't realize that this was even a possibility and it, it ended up being something they pursued and they ended up doing it down the line. And I was like, holy shit, yeah. you know, but that would have never happened if one, I hadn't had this feeling that he was like, like this good dude that was going to answer my question. And two, if he hadn't done it. So I agree with you. I think he's actually like, I, I think, he, I think that that's one of the best thank decisions God they could have made. Him. One of the yeah, best decisions God they could have made. And if Blizzard watches so, this, take the red tape off that man. That's the kind of guy that you need around. So please, if there's any red tape on that man, get rid of it. Let him go wild. <laughs> so I kind of want to bring it back to the uh, original kind of what the discussion point that we started. So it all started with obviously Frito suggesting that we go 5v5 now. And we've kind of come to the possible conclusion that there are people in the Overwatch team who, who understand why something like that would be a good idea. We feel like maybe somewhere along the management chain it's being held up. And we're kind of, we've, that's where we brought John in to say it. Because, because, like, sorry to interrupt. It's just that no, go ahead. that was outed because of the shareholder meeting. If Blizzard had its druthers, maybe they don't tell you anything ever till it's like out. Like, and yep. I, I think we've had devs actually say this. Jeff said they that, didn't like, he? Like, yeah, I wasn't sure if it was public or not, but I'm sure he has said it. Um, they don't like being on this marketing campaign. They really don't like it, and I don't blame them at all. I uh, like imagine having to be the guy that goes on camera and says like, oh, we're, we're super excited to bring Overwatch League to 5v5 and we have no idea when it'll be out. <laughs> it's going to be great. It's like, it was like, it, that's a, nobody wants that job. That's just the short stick in the organization. Uh, it, it, you know, and I think they're, they're doing the best with what they have. Uh, sorry to, to uh, I can't remember why I interrupted now. <laughs> I, went, I went on this line. Uh, you well, you were just saying that, it, 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 that the, even that you, I guess you're saying that even the team 
doesn't even get to discuss it potentially. Oh, oh yeah, it might not be done yet, right? And we want it to be good. We want it to be done. We want to support them. But then at the same time, it's like maybe publishing is like, hey, we've got the. Here, here's what's funny about the Overwatch Two story, okay? Or listen, listen to this. Im imagine this. This is probably something that actually happened, okay? We have the worst drama in public that Blizzard has ever seen. This Blitzchung event is the worst drama we could ever have and have <laughs> had. We Wait, better Blitzchung? announce Overwatch Two and whatever we got. Yeah, do you remember the Blitzchung oh, that thing? Was the Blitz Hong, Hong Kong, right? Yeah, yeah, the free Hong Kong Kong thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Continue. Way Sorry, too much kidding. drama. Pull that Overwatch Two cord. Go out and tell them it's coming out. Tell them it's gonna be amazing. Just, just say your, just say a bunch of fluff words. Like we don't, we have, we have no idea when it's coming out. But just say forget. it'll be the best thing it's possible. The rapper, not the We've got to control the message. And it, you know, no offense, marketing people. I know this is how the business works. I don't blame you. You gotta play the game. The media is like super critical of Blizzard. Like over critical. Content creators are over critical. So they got to control the message. They got to steer that in the right way uh, in order to, to, to write that ship. And then it's like, well, th we're still deciding on it. We're still making it. We're still changing things. Oh, yeah, let's try 5v5. Oh, yeah, we got to do this. And here's a bunch of challenges we didn't expect. That Oh, we got to hire hundreds more devs. To fit. Like, it's, it's – we have to understand that, that that's always a struggle for them with the communication pipeline that they're forced, forced somewhat to, like, clue us into things that aren't – fully finished yet i guess that was the only point i was trying to make is that like yeah. that sucks for them they want to just go make a great game and they got to somehow put on a little song and dance and be like oh it's gonna be amazing and, and 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 we're like why don't you communicate better but the thing is that we we should acknowledge is like communication is our thing so like that's what we do mostly yeah. i mean we do get we, some of us play games better than others but mostly it's like we interact with our audience like that's our jobs okay we're communicators uh first and foremost at least at least i am i suck at the game but um <laughs> they, they're devs they they make stuff on the computer right so in we live in this weird fantasy land where we expect devs to also be like brand ambassadors right and, and we had that with jeff in a way but that's like an unreasonable expectation to be like well you're just be kind, charming yeah. and, and and like um you know, and may maybe Jeff had some some flaws as well, especially if we're going to uh, we got the bucks got to stop somewhere. It's like, yeah, where, where are these old head decisions coming from? Exactly. Like all the, all these red tape we're talking about, like yeah. who's laying it down? Because we yeah. we know and I have Lance is 100 percent correct. There's people in the organization that like can see the elephants in the room. Like, well, why are we discussing the elephants in the room? I hijacked SVB's. Uh, transition or whatever at some point but no i was, I was just trying to summarize to make sure we're all on the same page no okay, yeah so i was just trying to summarize it yeah that's where that's where we kind of came to this from is that we're not saying that necessarily we're not necessarily reinventing the wheel ourselves with these ideas and someone in the dev team has probably suggested this as well like hey why don't someone someone in the dev team was flats in the meeting sat in the corner going hey guys why don't we go free to play and go five to five right now <laughs> and what, what we're saying is that there was a bunch of potentially there was a bunch of old people in that room as well staring at the miniature flats going what the fuck you on about so what what the kind of bringing it all around is is do we need to promote more john specters basically in the team yes. to get these kind of ideas out well the, the process is in place i guess you know we, we've got a new game director we've got that chain going up so now now we just got to give these the, that's sort of what i said earlier with like okay we need the new leadership to have some time to make some decisions and, and see what they're going to do i I want to just warn everybody to brace for impact because I have a feeling something's going to change. So like we all laid out here and I tried my best to follow it of the marketing language of this is their goals. This is where they're going. And then eventually it'll look like this. I feel like we're, we're due some explanations that are going to like reinvent like five V five to me feels like just a little, a little pebble uh, compared to what like, you know, like for example, it's like, if they're not going to free to play, well, what's your freaking plan? Like, we know you're going to do different cosmetics. We know you're probably going to monetize differently. You're afraid that loot boxes are going to be outlawed or something. So like, like there's got to be big decisions hiding behind that. And I wouldn't be surprised if they changed course at some point, because that's kind of what leadership change signifies. I'm still mystified how Jeff Kaplan broke up with us on like a tweet. It's like, you know, <laughs> yeah. thing, but he was like, yo, yo, it's not even real. a well-constructed tweet. It's just like a tweet that you send from, no the, from the toilet. <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. genuine dude though. Genuine dude though. I, yeah, yeah. I, I, we all really like Jeff. I just question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, 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 like, I just, I don't know what he's response is and isn't responsible for with this. And we have to almost assume he was responsible because who else was? Uh, he, if it wasn't no, him, he, no. <laughs> yeah, he one hundred percent was accountable for the fish rots from the head first. So, 
Yeah, and that's kind of when I brought this point up later that or earlier that you know since it was first announced it at that BlizzCon when Overwatch 2 was announced and they said it, all Overwatch 2 PvP, PvP content will be free for all consumers. Since they said that they've never come out and as as, as certainly I, I don't remember anywhere as emphatically for sure them coming out and saying that is still the plan. Nor nor have any I don't think anyone's right. really checked them on it. But it's I think it's conspicuous that they have not since also said by the way that's still going to be the thing. They told us about five v five. They told about this blah blah. blah. But never did they come out and say, by the way, guys, that's the little thing, which is why I brought that up. Because personally, I do wonder if somewhere along the line, they've kind of changed that, but they don't want to drop all the bad news at once. Or she was delayed. By the way, it's not going to be free either. So you better yeah. be prepared to pay. It would, it would um, have been good if the game finished what I'm going to call on time, legit on time, mm -hmm. which is like, oh, we're done developing. Here's Echo as a character. And six months later, Overwatch 2. Like, would anyone be like, oh, this is terrible. The sky's falling. Like, we, I don't think we feel that way. <laughs> now it's like another year. It's like, oh my God, I got to plan my whole life around not having content now for that extended period of time. Like that's just, it's just an outrageous thing. It's like, they're taking a gap year. As I, you know, that's a thing that kids do yeah. nowadays. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's a gap year. Find yeah. themselves. Which, which they won't admit to, by the way. They won't admit that the game was delayed even then. It's just a public delay now based on the information the shareholders had. And to be fair, there was like legal considerations towards being honest with your shareholders. Yeah, you but have to, yeah. We're, we were pretty sure because, and this is always my argument with that first delay, which some people think like, uh, it, how can it be delayed if it's not an, no, 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 no. Either it was delayed then early, earlier on in the timeline there, or they had planned to stop supporting their live service game for this amount of time was that the plan or was it delayed like like it's just i don't see any other other like option in that um anyway so with that amount of time span i'm assuming that there's like foundational changes to our expectations or they're still deciding it and they're still like rocky ground May maybe they still want to do that sv but like yeah, I, I don't know. I just yeah, it's like it's, it might it might be another decision they're willing to defer later. Like, let's confirm later. Like, we don't have to make any decision on it now while we're still figuring out what the fuck 5v5 even is. We don't need to announce this, is my Can guess. I also say I find 5v5 pretty underwhelming. Like, I, uh, as like, here's the new game that we've been working on for years. I'm like... You want to know something uh, yeah, very interesting? Of, uh, I thought, you, and let me know if you agree. Remember when we saw the playtest at BlizzCon this year? So... When we saw the BlizzCon playtest, it looked wonky. I mean, a lot of people were like, oh, I don't want to watch gold players play, you know, blah, 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 right? But it didn't look like anything had changed. The game hadn't changed at all. It was just 5v5. Like you just removed a tank. But then when we saw the pro, play, pro player play in September, it looked like six months of work had happened. Like there was significant changes, like Somber reworked, Bastion reworked. It did look like there was changes, like... Those were changes that looked like it would take six months of time, right? So I almost wonder, what happened to the two years before? Because it didn't look like the game was any different at BlizzCon than it was in 2019 when it was announced. But it looked a a, a, a noticeable amount different from, from March or April, whenever we saw it, to September, which is about six months. Mm -hmm. So if you multiply the six months, you know four times it should the game should have looked four times as different if, in that same span of time but it didn't look any different so i almost wonder what happened to the two years in between announcing it in 2019 and 2021 we seeing it 5v5 because 5v5 in march and 5v5 in september look like very different games mm -hmm. so well i'm not i'm not even sure it's a big secret that they, they it seems pretty clear that they must have made the decision on 5v5 very late like, it, it definitely wasn't initially, like, it doesn't seem to me like they were like, we're going to make Overwatch 2, we're going to go 5v5. And again, this might allude to Frito's point of like, well, why was, why did Jeff leave, was fired, whatever was, was this one of those things where it was like, Jeff leaves, okay, now we're going 5v5, by the way. Because you're right, Flats, like, it's not too, I mean, obviously there was PvE to be built in that time as well, but doesn't it didn't feel like two years worth of consideration was put into the 5v5 that we first saw. Mm -hmm. And it's not like, Overwatch 1 was going gangbusters with stuff either. Like we were still getting new heroes, but not like it doesn't it was it's not like the uh, the amount Much of slower. content you expect from other games. Like it like yeah, it was there were some offbeat cadences in there and they were still getting their grips on balance. Like the balance 
happened after Echo. Like that was the best period of balance, right? After Echo, it's like okay, quick, quick, let's notch that, tune that, whatever. Like that's where they got in their stride with balance. Prior to the, so so it's like there wasn't really anything tangible in the primary game either. So it's like where does that effort go? And yeah, I think Flats's point is uh, quite astute. My my only um, answer that I can guess is either it was all hands on deck on all the PVE content partially because I think that's where they have comfort zones. And if you want to have the wow devs bias towards something, why get your hands dirty with us? <laughs> like, like you see how <laughs> savage we've been on this show. Who wants with to talk monkeys. to us? It's like, screw these guys. Where's, where's our wow fans that give us like, I was going to say, uh, overwhelming adulation, but I don't, <laughs> I don't know if that's necessarily true for the wow community, either. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, they're pissed wow, too. like, We've all been to BlizzCon, I think, right? I don't know if has SV been to BlizzCon. I wow been. fans are passionate, okay? Wow fans at BlizzCon are passionate. So like that's who I'm thinking of when I say like a wow fan. Like they they love Blizzard, right? It's not like four competitive type players in Overwatch who are are beaten on the table and demanding things. Like like wow players have a different relationship to to Blizzard, I think. The average ones anyway, not the content creators. But uh back back to my point. I think they biased their workload towards trying to get those people happy for Overwatch 2. Um, or a mix maybe of this, they hit a reset button on, on all the PVP stuff. It's like, we had a whole bunch of plans for stuff. This is what we wanted to show. Here's a reset. And here's kind of like BlizzCon to go like the BlizzCon one, I think is just great. It's like, it felt like, 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 like a thing a group of buddies did. It's like, like we had a land party for this game we're kind of working on. It's like, <laughs> Overwatch or, or Reinhardt has two fire strikes now. Isn't that cute? It's like, that, that's sort of how it felt with 5v5. And then it's like, okay, we're going to redefine a lot of the characters now to fit those that rule set. I'm, I'm always suspicious, though, if Blizzard is more calculated with what they show us and it's like old builds and they almost That's what I information out there because I think they want to avoid the viewers doing what flats just did earlier, which is do the math of like, Oh, you showed us this and now that's this. So now that that's what six months of progress should look like. Let me extrapolate that. Now. I think they really don't want that to happen, but at the same time publishing, as I said earlier, puts them out there and like show something. We got to get those overwatch league viewership up. We better have a five V five play test. It's like, Oh, here's some bro. That's like it barely it. it, it that's Sombra change. Okay. We've talked about this before, but so clearly was going to be broken in pros hands in no way was balanced for pros but and then as we spoke about in those previous shows uh, they genuinely believe that it was that, balanced but... like i i don't remember yeah, who said yeah. this but like they they were talking them, like well, look yeah well, well i don't, don't want to get no, i don't want to get into that because then we know we're gonna end up you know down a rabbit hole i kind of let, let's let's try and really keep oh don't worry though. svb i'll get yeah. there in terms yeah, of yeah, workload, yeah. We're gonna head to side in, in terms of workload, I'm trying to say it's like so. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much they're controlling the message there, and if there's more behind the doors. But if there is, here's the question. Here's the, here's the truth. Okay, I, I'm kind of I'm trying to paint all the different pathways here. If there is stuff hidden behind closed doors, and they're showing us a glimpse of like two years ago or something, right? Which could be a thing. I don't know. Just just to throw a, a kernel out there, um, wouldn't you start to tap into that really soon? Right. Yeah. Like if, if there was Hope more so. to show, when would you wait to show it? Because supposedly mm. an early build is in April for pros to play. So it's like what there's no hiding it then. Right. Or you're not going to have two years that ago whole decision in April. Is so so that, that's not a thing. The, the what is flats? That whole fuckery is so dumb. Unless there's a lot more, I would say. Unless yeah. there's a lot more uh, that we're going to be surprised with and overwhelmed with. Nah, even even them playing, what, are they going to play it for six months before anyone even gets the beta? And then another yeah, three or four before like it goes that. live? Like, you're going to kill the nostalgia of that so fast. We're redefining yeah. esports. That's what that is. Yeah. I, it, <laughs> that I think that promise was made before the me. delay, though. You know what I mean? But, like... It, God, yeah. No, 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 no! I don't like, believe that. Like, I, I don't believe that. We we didn't know about the delay. Yeah. We didn't know about the delay. Thanks. But I bet you the delay you happened like when car. Jeff left. Oh, like, I bet the Overwatch team didn't know. It, it, no, it's no, the delay. A mile away. Frida, the delay would have had to been disclosed in between the previous quarters. So the delay had to have been between Q2 and Q3 of this year. Because they have to, like, well, they cited a leadership they... change though, and that happened earlier in the year. So, like, yeah, they struggled. But, but the, fi the, thing, the Sam, final decision they struggled with it. Yes, yes, yeah. the final decision. But what yeah. I'm saying is, it would have been obvious based on what they have, right? 
And then yeah. who knows how much work was getting done during the lawsuits? Maybe zero, right? For yeah. months, maybe. So yeah. So you yeah, you are right that the final decision would have had to come on schedule but what i'm saying is they know what content they have behind closed doors they, they would have like, known that they probably the would teams, have had to do it do the teams in the before. league know that's a different question because they're separate entities no and that but i think that's the no, problem is i think the just i think the promise <laughs> so they take this from like an they, overwatch they league a whole new roster not being sure well, yeah well, I, I think it, wasn't it yeah <laughs> take it from an overwatch owner's perspective you are absolutely livid you are scraping the bottom of the barrel every other game is popping they get content they're thriving you're not you want answers you want Overwatch two now because well, i remember leaked, though, two years ago we were talking about overwatch two and how bad teams won that asap Two years ago when I worked in it, that's when we were talking about it. I can only imagine how bad it is now. So all that time has passed. I'm sure the demands were strong to give us Overwatch 2 now. So the decisions made to make to have the pros play on Overwatch 2, even if it's early, then it gets delayed. But teams have already dropped half their roster now. You're, so like you're, that you're wasn't just an announcement like, though, Flats. That, no, that wasn't an official announcement. That was a leak from a journalist who went behind the scenes to find out exactly what you're saying, right? Mm -hmm. And the quote that he got from a source was Get it fixed, get it shipped. As in, let's move it on, folks. Overwatch 2, now, whatever you got, the pencil's down, kids. Like, that's what that is. Yeah, right. And yeah. if you, and it almost feels like, oh, like I zoned out. I was sleeping through the whole test. And you're saying pencil's down. I haven't even started yet. Like, that's how it feels like. And mm -hmm. we're going to know that. There's, there's no hiding it. Like, these questions we have, it'll be obvious come April. Like, what, what do you have? And what I'm saying is, if it is what we've seen already, that's not enough <laughs> in my right. opinion, but it, it is what it is. They like, I wish, I wish they could tell us like, Oh, there was a reset in philosophy or whatever. It's probably not going to happen. It's probably, they, they're probably going to have to control the message again and make it seem like this is what they wanted to do. But it, it, it doesn't look like that's what you would want to do. You wouldn't want this little to show. You wouldn't want, we're still going to redesign every rework. So who knows how that's going to get back. It, we wouldn't have all these questions, but um, they definitely did not want to have to say, and commit to that overwatch two thing that that must have been a decision around that time because you remember the the article was about the discontent i'm pretty sure i could be wrong on this the article was about the discontent and then uh, the statement who's, came out who, who's the, the, the owners the owners okay, yeah. the, the, putting pressure right i can't remember I, correct Which me if I'm probably wrong. makes sense was the official announcement that. it'll be on overwatch two was that in that leak or no, no, did I that come that officially in response to it to be like, okay, fine. Well, we'll cause someone, someone at the top would have, of whatever organization want to say, fix this. Cause, because that is fire in, <laughs> you know, everything burning. That's what that article was. Everything's burning, fix this. And that's like a commitment deadline. Like we're guaranteed new thing. And then now we're in scramble town. So this is what it, it makes me feel like sometimes the premise of this conversation, no, no offense, SV, uh, you know, I love your, love your shows and everything. But uh, it's a little quaint of like, how do we save Overwatch 1 now? Bitch, they don't know how they're going to launch the beta of the next game that they have to do now. <laughs> they have to be doing it now. It's got to be yeah. done now. So, like, I almost say, screw skins. Let's just let's just have a four-month break or whatever it's going to be. Enjoy your holiday, everybody. Okay, Overwatch, like, it's functionally closed. The shop's closed. Okay, we're redesigning the interior. Okay, we got a lot of work to do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. for once, the interior. Like, all they focus on is the wrapper, and that has been the biggest problem of Overwatch for four years, maybe five, ever since I think the Mercy rework where they made her the best hero in the game. So it's, it's pish posh, unlucky. So, so we do we feel like in many ways, and I want to get after I want to quickly get, wrap this up and get to Sam's point because I haven't even talked about what Sam wants to do. Oh God, we're gonna be here all day. Do, do we feel like <laughs> no, it's, it's quick? Been, don't worry. Do we feel like it's been a theme of the dev team just being forced over and over? Because if we trace that that history it just sounds over and over a case of the devs are working 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 They're understaffed and then That's what something something a train comes along and smashes them and says speed up speed up now drop something now and they're like oh Overwatch 2 is coming we'll redefine the sequel and it's like speed up now 5v5 guys 5v5 speed up now oh the pros will play it the pros will play it first so is it a case that we feel like the dev team are trying to do their thing and then they just keep getting rammed by something over and over and over to try and disrupt them no so and the evidence force something like... they didn't want force something they didn't want to do no, I, I, I don't think it is. I think that I, I don't think that they would be getting forced if leadership understood the average consumer and how to make a good game experience. On that note, Sam, really... what is your idea? Hit me up. Well, I, I have an honorable mention. I was going to talk about Brig. Uh, I would remove her from the game. 
I get to send a message. The hero <laughs> has been nerfed. First of all, we're, we're going to start. I want to talk about that. I went through three years of patch notes. So, guys, I want you guys to guess how many times. Did I say this earlier? No, I didn't. No, we, did we started with, so. we, we didn't answer it, though. We saved it. Okay, okay, yeah. What, how many times do you think Briggs been nerfed since she got launched? Today? It's got to be double 38. digits. 20. Who, what was if your? 14, I said 13 38. to 15. Okay. Brig has been nerfed 19 times since she came out. Nice, Frito. And is still one of the best heroes in the game. And to be fair, it was a rework in there, too. But there ahead. was a rework in there. But I, I yeah, well, the rework was um, they, they, they nerfed her and buffed her at the same time. So I have that underlined. I actually did not yeah. count those, Frito. I did not count the rework at all. Those are just like straight up nerfs to Brigida. The problem is, like, I don't think that doing anything other than that first would solve any problems because then when you put out a new game and all these concepts that fundamentally do not work in Overwatch, when I say fundamentally, what made Overwatch have so much depth and so enjoyable was the fact that single target healing was like kind of like the only option, right? Like, it made decision making be so impactful. It made the game just feels so alive and it felt like anything could happen. And there was just like an ever expanding learning curve of the game. The, the more your learning curve expands in a product, the more people want to sink their time into it, right? Because you feel like it's fair. You feel like it's worth your time to invest into that. Brig, if she's proven anything, it's that there is no functional way for that hero to be in this game the way she operates. It, it can't work. It kills the tank role the most, more than anything. It hurts tanks because she, the backlines are just unpunishable. So how, like, you're going as Winston, break... The Aspen clip. Value. I show it all the yeah. time. The Aspen clip. Yeah, yeah, where she just continuously booping him off. And you know what the craziest part is? She actually has the highest potential healing output as well. And, the, and the, she can heal without rally up to 255 health per second if she has all of her packs on different targets. 255 health, that is fucking crazy. With rally, it's over 300. Some of that being armor. And what, what happens when you put that kind of character in the game is people say, well, why the fuck am I going to spend my time playing this when there's this, this gimmicky bullshit? Like, the reason why the game was so good in October is because no one was playing Bap or Brig specifically like they weren't played people did not realize that they were still really good then blizzard buffed them and then everyone got super mad right so the first thing i'm doing is i'm removing brig from the game making a pr message about it and saying look until we fix this character and find a healthy way to implement it like we we want to show our players that our game has integrity because if your game does not have integrity you're going to have al pros walking out the door in the middle of the season you're going to have your average consumer saying Yo, like, why Why would I ever sink my time into this? This is just an absolute joke as to how good, like, and that's just what's happened. So you need to get on the ground, get your boots on the ground, and go after and attack the core issues that drive your average consumer away from the game and make people want to play, right? Because if people don't want to play your game, I don't care what new shit comes out. They're just going to be gone in six months. And you know what our chart's going to look like? It's going to look like just the one down below. It's going to have a huge spike and then... You're never going to get it back. That's what Fortnite does so well. That's what Apex has done so well. Like, even Flats, the, the Warzone kind of model that I think Apex kind of... Uh, wait, wait, what come first? Did, did Apex come first or did Warzone come first? I think it was Apex, right? I think Apex uh, came first. And I think Warzone it was Apex. It was, I think it was Apex. Yeah, maybe maybe, uh, maybe Warzone took a page yes. out of their book, but whenever they put new shit in the game, it's broken for a week or two and then nerfed to the ground and, and then it's gone. Brig has been nerfed 19 times in three years and is still dominating this game. That is inexcusable. That well, is at your tier of play. excusable at our tier of play. That's all the more reason to redesign it. If the character is meant to be an entry level character that allows people to get into the game, why is she terrible at low level play but broken at high level play? Like it's it's so it's poorly designed. It just, it's 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 fundamentally flawed and it's it's literally unfixable. That's what they need to understand. You can't fix it with this iteration of the character. Just vault it for the time being. And you know, you know what's crazy? This game gets three times like it's 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 the proofs in the pudding. Look at how good the game was in October when no one picked Brig of last year. It was I saw one player as well, Nifkins picking Brig. Or I think Brig yes. got picked, picked a little more than Bap back then, if I remember correctly. It was Bap wasn't picked either because Bap he struggled he had to heal small the time. Too. And he had small window, so he wasn't picked. The main comps that were run a lot of the time were either Mercy Ana or Lucio Moira. And you had a really good combination of like Rush 
and poke comps being played. And like Zen, if you wanted to play Zen, he was super vulnerable. And there was so much depth and chess in the game. It felt like original Overwatch because there were so many different decisions and combos that you can make. Every single role could get a lot of value. And I remember specifically like tweeting about that being like, wow. I did. This took me aback. I can't believe how good this game is right now. Seagull made his video. The Everyone Seagull did. video. Was, yeah. Oh. It, went, it, was, it was crazy. And, and you, the, the one thing that needed to make that happen is Brig was not played. I, I know I'm a broken record on this, and I'm, I'm sorry for that. I truly am. But God damn it's it. The truth, I know it's the fucking truth. And the proof is in the pudding. It's been 19 nurse. You nerf a character 19 times. Straight up, I'll re fucking read through them. Shield Bash, Cone Angle reduced from 90 to 60. It's just little slaps on the wrist over and over. I'm not going to read through these whole things. It's going to go on forever. But 19 times, and she's still broken. And let's, speaking of the elephant in the room, this balance team needs to go. I'm sorry. You've had so many opportunities to prove yourself, and you have fucking royally shit on it over and over and over and over. Hey, Flats, what were your thoughts on the fit, the extra damage to Reinhardt's swing last year when Double Shield's dominating the game, which, by the way, ev all the streamers said, hey, if you nerf it like this, it's just going to come back. Like, you haven't attacked the core issue. You're just putting the wrapper on. You won't go after the change the damn candy bar. That's what we want. We want, we want the candy bar to be good. Yeah. And it's it's every time. It's it's it, it just it just needs to happen. So to fix Overwatch 1, step one, get Brig out of the game. Send a message. People, this game has integrity. It's worth your time to sink into it. We're not going to allow people to bypass the learning curve of the game. Get in here and have fun. And they need to step into the ranked mode and make people want to play it. I, you know what would be really fun, too? I, I, sorry, this is kind of a second point. I, I think it'd be sweet if they had, like, weekend throwback tournaments that are, like, 6v6. Like, what, when, one weekend, it's uh, you're forced to play GOATS. And you six stack with your friends across every rank. You have to stack with the team to play. And it, just for one weekend, there's a top 500 ladder. And you have to play goats, and it's just just one week, one off. It's reusing content, right? It wouldn't be that hard to make. You could probably do it in an hour, and throw it out tournament format every maybe once a month, maybe once once every weekend. Like what? Uh, like I'd play that. I'm sure you guys would find a stack to play with too. And it's it's reusing content. It's efficiency. You don't have to sink. You don't have to pull any of your resources away from Overwatch too. But you can still liven up the game and do something to make people want to come back and play Overwatch or what it truly is a team based game. It's for a team. You have to do it with your friends, and that's what makes gaming so much fun. And We've continuously made decisions to take the game away from playing with your friends, which is just completely I mean, out of the touch current with meta what gaming is. GM right now, it's solo queue playstyle. It's TDM solo queue. Yeah. You have ball hog, or or mm -hmm. like ball sig slash hog sig, right? That's your tank lineup. Your DPS are like tracer, Hanzo, um, Echo. Echo, like soldier, like you know what I mean. Like it's very very either much like low pocket or play solo, and then you bring Zen in your back line, like. Your, your your Zen sits back there and is is Zen supposed to be a glass cannon? No, no. With Brig, he, he's a fortress and it's basically yeah, an artillery like battery sitting back there. You stick your head out, you're just getting five orb volleyed, which has no fall off damage. So you just get yeah. blown away. Um, you you on the DPS end, your Tracer is just really like self reliant. But Tracer is one of the most fun heroes in the game, and I'm okay with Tracer being good. I think the the game feels really good when Tracer is good. But um, so Tracer is one thing, but then. Hanzo, Hanzo is supposed to be a sniper. Doesn't feel like a sniper. He's more just like a up close storm arrow tank buster deletion cannon, which is fun. Not fun for me. I don't think it's fun for you. It's 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 yeah, not so fun boring. for nobody. It's, it's so um, Echo I, I Echo is just is just its own. So, you know what I mean? And and so it's like who's having fun at that point? There's no team play. There's no coordination. Most of my games are silent games nowadays. There's no reason to talk. You just you just sit there and you slowly play the game and you slowly take space or blow up and go back to spawn and come back and you sit there and you poke and that, that's all you do you know it's mm. it's not about so, teamwork anymore i, I just want to quickly chime in here and you know I, I while i personally agree with you guys and you, you don't have to get me started on hanzo hate train but i think there will be a lot of people watching and listening to this who will say well that's all cool for you guys and gm and stuff but it, none of that really even has any relevance to me yeah, when i yeah, play well. flat Wait, so wait, go wait, ahead. Yeah. So go ahead. What's your feedback to the to people who feel and well, think that? Well, to which point it doesn't affect well, you? What if, what, well, they just what, feel like I think a lot of people feel like, well, I I don't even Brig isn't even a problem for me. Like it doesn't matter. Not only is it a problem, like sucks. Like yeah, that, that, she's terrible in the ranks. 
She's well, terrible. She's not even so we right. all yeah, agree then the that she point. sucks. You, we all agree, just people, in different yeah, ways. Yeah, but, what they're yeah. saying is if you change or remove Brig, what would it matter? It wouldn't change. It would li literally would change nothing because she's not there in half their games anyways, or 90% of their games. So anyways. then let her just get removed then. No problems. Then there's but no will issue. that help? Will that help Overwatch 1? It will. Like, it will. will because when you see prominent gamers come back to this game and take it seriously, you also want to take it seriously. The reason why Plat, Plat is the worst rank in the game. Low Plat, <laughs> no one cares. No one cares. And it's on Blizzard. And see, here's Blizzard's problem again. This is like they're not proactive. They blame the players instead of stepping up themselves to try to get the players. You're the figurehead of the ship, Blizzard. Like, if you want people to give a shit about your game, you got to give a shit about your game. You got to send the message that, yo, we want you guys to try and rank. We private like they, they've just made so many decisions like private profiles a lot of other things now you could argue for that to be fine but i'm not specifically saying that is an issue but it's the it's the narrative of we're going to continuously make it so that rank doesn't have integrity this game doesn't have integrity and let people do whatever they want pish posh pick daisies in the fucking outfield no i'm playing baseball i'm not trying to pick daisies out here people showed up to play baseball help them play baseball don't let some kid in there pick daisies in the goddamn outfield play the game right so it does affect Platt because it's about sending a message, right? You need to let people know that you give a shit about your game. I give a shit about your experience. Start banning these idiot trolls who get on accounts and just int games like the, the wrecking ball I had, who did get banned. Shout out to Blizzard for that. Uh, the guy who was protesting gun violence and not using his guns on ball in my game. It was great. <laughs> Love that. You got to get people like that the hell out of here. You got to incentivize group queues so that people can enjoy the game with their friends. That is what gaming is about. That is when Overwatch is fun. I play all the time with, with Johnny, who's in plat, and my buddy Wyatt, who's gold plat on Zen. We stack up and like, look, I don't try. I just pick Brig and AFK. I'm not going to lie to you. But they enjoy the game way more because they're playing with their buddies. So, like, Blizzard True. needs to step up and get these people to really care about their game. That's how you can go the extra mile. Make the game experience good. When, when's the last time you've heard, the, the, when people say they don't play Overwatch anymore, nine times out of ten it's the same thing. It's like, I just get throwers on all my games. Like, it's just not, comp is just awful. Like, Quick Play's great. They've done a great job with Quick Play. But guess what? Quick Play doesn't make it. The best games, the best competitiveness does. The most viewership in every hobby on the damn planet is the highest level of play in that activity. The Super Bowl, NBA Finals, you name it, the Olympics, damn it, any, anything. The most viewed events in the world are where people are trying their best and people give a shit, right? You got to help your players give a shit again. And when they do, because we want to, but they know damn well it's not worth their time. So it's, it, you got to send a message. It's about changing the narrative. That's the only way Overwatch 1 gets back in the game. It's that we care, and we're going to make sure your experience is actually good here. And we've neglected you guys for years. We've paid the price for it, and we're sorry. We're going to make it better. And that's why I think this new leadership, those are those kind of guys. And that's, you know who I think would be great for the Overwatch League director position they're talking about opening up? A guy like Packing 10. Guy who's been on the ground, right? They need the guys that are on the ground and understand the game experience that needs to get delivered. And that is our path to success. That this Overwatch could blow up again today if it was the actual game experience that we very rarely get in top 500. But yep. we just know what The YouTube games, we call, I call them. The YouTube games, yes. Yeah. If, if most of the games were YouTube games, which they could be if you stack with your friends, right? Everyone's trying. Well, yeah. This this kind of brings me to my point where I'm mean, I i, I want yeah, free to chat and go, but I'll spell out because I think I agree with everything you're saying, Sam. Like not not mm. not any part of me is like no, don't do that. I think for from my people because my people again, I'm not I'm not good. We're, I, I, yeah. yeah. we're subpar, we're master, so we don't even encounter half these problems half the time. And I know the mo the majority of the people that I speak to for my content side, they 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 never care about any of this. For them, it's not relevant. To them, I think I think you are touching on a core point though, is the idea of playing with your friends i think is core and should be and always has been core to why people play overwatch is that experience of stacking up with your buddies getting into the you know the queue whether it's quick play or whatever playing together having fun so personally i would like to see changes that allow stacking a little bit more easier and what i mean by that is obviously you guys in gm you can't do more than a duo which would be nice to remove as well can't even but... do it in lucio ball yeah what <laughs> yeah you can't trio Where... queue in lucio ball no no cap <laughs> If, if you're MMR, I, not even SR, MMR is high. Whereas what I would like to see is uh, penalties removed in general for from stacking. Um, basically in the sense that when you stack, as people will know, outside of GM, 
you tend to get put up in much harder games. Uh, and I know this is a little bit controversial, so I don't want to spend too much time on it. Again, I just want to give Frito the chance to speak, but I, I think we should just let six stacks play without changing the balancing in any way when the matchmaker's considering them, because I think that that's when people have the most fun. And the worst thing is when you stack up with your friends, you gather up together, and then you feel like you're up against a wall, uh, getting put up against much harder games. Um, you know, Smurfs and shit. I don't want to get too deep into that either, but you know, you, the, the proportion of Smurfs and shit that we get when we stack in, it makes you not want to play with your friends, and that makes you not want to play in turn. So I know people, there are solo queue warriors who would say, well, I want a solo queue. Why do I get punished by going up against a sweaty six stack? Um, but I think that's 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 the kind of direction that I would think would really help the average player's experience. Frida, what do you think? Um, yeah, I got to be honest, guys. Like the a lot of these changes, I just I hate to always be the bearer of bad news in the 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 percentage gains that we're talking about, whether it's balance changes for the top one percent or people who want to. So Blizzard's strategy to knock down groups was that it was their assumption that so few people will want to group that they want the way I like to call it. And I hope there's not too heavy handed way to explain it, but it's like they, they want bumper bowling. Okay. So when you, when you play normal bowling, is that, is that what you do? Do you play bowling? I, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Bowl. Yeah. When you bowl, when you bowl, when one bowls, when one touches grass and maybe it's on a <laughs> date no. or something with a fictional women that don't exist. Isn't that right? So, no, uh, yeah, yeah. She so, goes to a different okay. school. When you're when you're bowling, um, there's gutters on the side which punish you for missing. Okay, bumper bowling sort of gives you the gives lets kids play and it bounces. There's no gutters basically. It just keeps bouncing and bouncing, so you're gonna hit something, and it gives you the sense of satisfaction and um, lets you try to enjoy it if you have no fundamentals whatsoever. I like this analogy because this is how I feel the Overwatch ranked experience prepares people to learn Overwatch, where if you don't play against any coordination, you never end up learning what those are uh, or what the, what like the base set of overwatch as a competitive experience is, which is like, you, you know, dive within your honors line of sight and use these resources here. And in order to counter the pharmacy, you need resources to funnel to this, like, like all that strategy stuff that I love so much just more or less doesn't exist. And it's more about solo QE stuff is always going to like devolve to be the standard meta of average overwatch ranked of like moving and shooting and just getting value somehow on your own the best you can. Um, and so, which is why we find ourselves in even top tier metas of this, where if you don't, ha e even for you guys up, up there, if the balance isn't so much that like teamwork stuff uh, works, it always kind of biases a little bit towards that anyway, even if the team meta is different. So um, this is sort of my entire rant about why I hate ranked in general, but like, like, I, I don't know if people, if enough people would take advantage of, of six stacking now for it to like move the needle in any perceivable way. I of course want it like, like, but, but I think what they need to do is redesign ranked so that when you group with friends, it gives you an accurate separate ranking of you yes. as a team, because what happens in reality of like, if, uh, if we wanted to stack, we would have to be on SR accounts that aren't accurate to where we our team should be ranked. And there's no yeah. way for the game to say, oh, you got a bunch of scrubs and Samito on Doomfist that we're pocketing. Like, imagine how horrible that would be for literally anyone yeah. we played against if we just pocketed Samito's Doomfist against Platts. I've already seen him do it in solo queue. It would be horrendous <laughs> for them. But all the, the rant I just went on on the resources of the game and you got to do this and blah, blah, blah. If you're not experiencing that, the community kind of doesn't learn it. So in one way, it's medicine for you to learn the real game to get smashed by a strategy and then have to like question yourself and actually fix it, which is what happens uh, when you when you play a real esport. Um, but um, it would have to need accurate ranking to make it feel fair because otherwise you're just like, 100%. I'm going to jump in and play Overwatch casually. All of a sudden now I'm playing against Sam Mito. What the fuck is this? And that's why so many people get mad at Sam for, for smurfing. I, you know, obviously mm. I think it's very useful for content and teaches a lot of people a lot of things, especially legitimizing how what ranked doesn't do poorly, which is uh, it it does accurately put you in the bands of your skill at the game. What it doesn't do is accurately distribute you based on your like knowledge of the team play esport of the game. That's not mm -hmm. like first and foremost. That's how you get Flats ma Master's teammate who's like high ground on Hollywood. Why would I do that? Like, like, it's yeah. like God, you know, that clip it's, is it, so golden. 
Yeah, I would, lo- I would love it. That's a, that's an oldie but a goodie. But um, okay, so I, I think that's healthy for the game. But I don't know if Blizzard is uh, really prepared to make that jump. We'll see. Aaron Keller has made the right noises to to mm. indicate he's like, yeah, this is a competitive game, and we're gonna have to treat this seriously. It's like okay, yeah, but show us, court, yeah, Aaron, like and, show and, us what that means because it means this is like a Dota game, which is. If you want to play ranked, you might get stomped. Okay, like it's tough. Yeah. The game is tough, and I think it's just getting harder with Overwatch Two. If you're not skilled mm-hmm. in Overwatch Two, I think you're screwed because a lot of the stuff Sam's talking about with like easy value and stuff, they've been hacking away at that. They've been trying. I know. I know Brig's strong for you guys now, but they Brig is harder to play now than before. She might be oppressive, hundred oh, percent. But she is harder to play. So yes. this is what I always yeah. try to get through to you guys that I think you is a blind spot for you that you don't see what I see which is all the Brig players who physically cannot play Brig now, right? It's too hard for them mechanically. Because all your strengths, Sam, I love watching your, your gameplay for this. I learn a lot of your spacing and timing. And boom, that's where your Doomfist skill, your Brig skill, like, like you're just in, boom, time, this, ability, hit, stun, cancel, boom, boom, boom. Like it, it's so fluid because your Overwatch IQ is at such a level and your movement mechanics. And you know, Flats obviously on Ryan is, a, is poetry and motion as well in the same way. It's it's very similar, but our community doesn't have that skill set. So when we come at it with like balancing stuff, I'm like I start to wince a well, little. That's why bit. I like, want to eh, change. I, yeah, I think I think redesign is is definitely a thing. But um, anyway, uh, I, I I spoke on the balancing thing and I spoke on the stacking thing. I don't. I, I think you're right on both. Getting lost a little bit in the sauce here. I think the ranking system needs to be changed for that to happen. Is what I'm trying to say. Is like, can mm-hmm. I add on to my point as well? We should yeah, have a way we can group, but get a different ranking. Mm-hmm. That's it. I, I think the main thing, like, I, I agree with you in that I don't think this would fix the game entirely. My point is that it, since it's the one thing that we need to do, it, like, if you want to fix a product, you have to start at the foundation, right? And I think that you need that really solid foundation that Overwatch used to have because it was the way it was to then build on it and do the things that you were talking about, Frito. Like, I think that... That is step one, and it needs to be step one because if that's not the foundational level going into Overwatch 2, we're just going to be in the same ship. We're going to be going in circles, you know? Uh, but, yeah, no, I think I think you kind of hit the nail on the head there, and I do agree with you. I just think it would be a great starting point for the time being. Okay, so uh, anything else to add on those, any of those before we kind of wrap up? I want to quickly run through any suggestions that we got from chat, but Flash, you got anything to say on? <laughs> Well, I, this is the absolute opposite of what we were. Oh, I was hoping at the end of this we'd feel it was just optimistic and positive. Just because um, they're not going to break, actually, but but he's right, I, honestly. Like yeah. I, never, I haven't even thought about it recently because I just know it's not going to happen. Like I like it sucks. You know where I am? I'm here. Or I talked about it earlier, all the way through. Not even complaining anymore. Not even saying it anymore because it's not going to happen. Don't care. It was here saying like this is sucks. Please get rid of this. Please, it's time. Now hit here. Now I've just accepted that it will never happen, even though nerfs. it is the best it is the best thing to rebuild that foundation. It's yeah, unlucky. I will say well, though, I am optimistic in general because look, I think we are at rock bottom. I I think I remember talking. I don't know if what podcast was on or whatever. Uh, but like, two years ago, I, I said the only way that I see this changing is if they tank the stock and it makes investors and the Overwatch League owners like have to chime in and be like, what are you guys doing? And that's happened, right? So we, we've seen leadership change, which is good. The guys that are going in, we like. Now we're just on the clock waiting for their actual decisions to, to have out like an effect on the game. Like we are, I, I would say, hold on. That's classic me fashion. Um, I will say, that um, I just hit my head and I forgot what I was going to say. Oh my god, I'm an idiot. Uh, <laughs> the stock, the stock is tanked so much that now there's nowhere. Yeah, you know, yeah, nowhere it's it's like the change is going to come, and I I do believe that the change will come now, especially with a lot of these go getters getting pulled into Blizzard. Those are the it's guys starting. we need, and I've, I I start. Yeah, I I th- I do have. I think if those guys are allowed to to actually make the decisions, got a bright future. I I, I do believe that, and I, I really really hope that Blizzard gives them the chance to do that. That would be beautiful. So good luck, guys. We're rooting for you. We bat for the home team. We're just a little sad. So sorry for being negative Andes. Yeah, that's definitely not the intention of what, was, what, was, what we're kind of trying to get out here. We're just trying to, yeah, find find some light at the tunnel. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. so what I want to do now really quickly, because we've, we've kind of gone over what we already said we would. So I want to quickly wrap up. Uh, I'm going to give a quick suggestion. Uh, I'm going to rattle off some suggestions from chat, and I want you guys to give like a 
one to two sentence reply if you if you have any strong feelings either way on the on that idea. The first one will be kind of spicy, which I, I want to hear Frito's take because Samito I and, and Flats and I kind of half touched on this when we last called. But going back to open queue, if we went 5v5, because uh, Flats, just to context, Flat brought up a clip. Uh, what, what channel was it, Flats? It was like offline TV, like podcast or some, something like that. Yeah, yeah. And the guy said that basically uh, 2 2 2 was the dumbest decision they ever made in the history of Overwatch because it ruined the game for casuals. And the whole point of Overwatch was supposed to be that you can pick whatever you want to pick and being restricted by your, your role, you know, defy and those characteristics. So, would going back to open queue help? Are you, you were asking me? Yeah, you, 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 oh. you go. Um, I think what I don't like about this process, and this happens in life as well, where someone will have a, an argument, okay? And they'll say, to see the change you want, you need to do 10 things, right? To, to reach whatever goal you want. Um, it goes for everything in life. I'm avoiding making some big analogy. I don't know if anybody really needs, but you know what I mean? It's like, like things are multifaceted in that way. The conversation between open queue and roll queue to me is like, well, what are your priorities? What do you want to get out of it? And I think people often kind of miss some of those, that checklist of things in either direction. So a problem that I have with open queue suggested for 5v5, well, are you going? Are you anticipating that you'd be able to balance the game to make damage relevant, or to because that was an issue before, right? Like, um, I think having locking only one tank solves the problem of, uh, f especially five v five in general. All the positives me and SV have said about the casual player base in five v five and why it'll make them playable for for you, you kind of just toss it out the window so that you can pick whatever hero you want like the, the that premise unchecked that everyone can pick anything all the time and swap all the time isn't competitive i'll just flat out say it just not competitive if you wanted to do that you could have done a hero draft of some kind or other ways to like mold team comps to plan for that someone hit bingo you, <laughs> bingo if you don't have a hero draft then what you get is a singular meta because like there's going to be a way to solve for whatever the win condition of the game is. And if it is go win on the objective and you have a comp that's goats, like it was really, really difficult for anyone to theory craft a strategy that beat it. Eventually like it kind of happened, but it also took a lot of those brig nerfs were during that time. Remember yeah. that? So, like yeah. a lot of like, oh, wow, they nerfed brig and then do? the game opened up. Who would have thought? Well, uh, my, my point is, I, I think it's much harder to balance for, all possible combinations than it is the world we have now. So like what, what I'm saying is whatever you liked about October last year, I don't think exists in open queue really, because uh, mm -hmm. having multiple comps that are good on different maps is a result of some of those other changes. So you can't, yeah, big slam. You know, the grass isn't always greener on the other side. And it's very to easy to like shut, remember the freedom the you had in open queue, but forget yeah, like, realistically a lot of heroes were terrible yeah, one warning. like just god awful like like <laughs> useless like you could play them if you board. wanted but yeah like hanzo and stuff and you got like tracer zipping around it's dive meta they had no idea what to do with some of those projectile heroes and you, you had hey, i had an 85 percent win rate on hanzo win. Meta. yeah yeah a, 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 a few people stood no, out kidding. but it's like it's like what do you want do you want the game to be more free and open to interpretation but there's a lot of wasted, like I'm gonna say wasted potential. Sam likes the, the me and Sam uh, uh kind of came at odds last podcast with like the term depth, right? It's like depth to me in the game often is that there's multiple strategies that you can go into the tier the tier list and still become viable. Whereas if the game is more if and I already think 5v5 is doing this in a major way, if it's gonna reward skill more, then a lot of that depth might go away. Like I have no idea what they're gonna do with like Symmetra in five v five. Like how is how is she? What's the character how is she I kind of at all? I have no if idea. you got Sombras and Tracer, it's just Somber Tracer all the time, right? Because the, we understand why Symmetra is good now because you got May and Reinhardt, and if you play a full got tanks together in a Death Ball, it can Mega Death Ball. But now we're saying you can't do that anymore. So I'm like, well, it's just hard for me to see that. So anyway, um, the de it, it, you got to pick your poison with this stuff. Do you want a diverse game where heroes legitimately can compete? Um, or um, do you want absolute freedom? Because the more freedom you have, 
the harder it is to balance. That, that's basically my point, because the variables become the stack. On, you can't control as many variables, whereas now they're saying one tank. Like, you, you, you ain't picking five, okay? <laughs> uh, open queue, maybe you could. And, and maybe a lot of people like that. Like, we've seen little clips of people picking five Reinhardts and running to the point with a Lucio or something. Like, it's adorable, but it's not a competitive <laughs> game, okay? It's not, it's not be, to be taken seriously. Did anybody look back to, like, Tw- the earliest days of competitive Overwatch. Oh, it's six divas stalling. Yeah, with six divas God. stalling, or the, the five meta. Winston's, one Lucio, two Winston's. It was two, 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 yeah, it was two Clown Winston, Fiesta. two Tracers, and two Lucios. Was that it? If, that that was yeah. definitely a thing. Yeah, that, that was, was it. Yeah, thing. that was that's it. Yeah, and that was when Lucio could heal the whole gentlemen. map too. Right. That's not. That's not. That's not an esport. Okay. Wait. wait did they, did they ask like. about open queue or or roll or uh, hero limit? Open queue, not hero limit. Yeah, okay, so you wouldn't have the hero, but still, like, regardless, even when they put it in hero limit, you just got heroes that synced up in the same role. Mm. So you're still kind of doubling down, right? We got Sombra Tracer now. Maybe you would want to pick two Tracers if you could, but now we just got, you know, Mega Tracer in, uh, uh, or Mega Sombra in 5v5. It's like, you know, you still pick synergistic things that are basically, you know, double shield, same idea. It's like, well, we can't pick two Orisas, so I guess we'll we'll have this other guy that's like Orisa. Uh, if you could pick two Orisas, you, it, it, the argument still stands is my point. Like, like, a uh, single uh, pick is like such a drop in the bucket in compared to, to the problems of it. And it, it always comes down to format for me. Cause like Sam's getting all excited about a goats tournament. I'm like, you know, I, I, I don't want goats to be the game, but if it's like a format, yeah, I don't, I don't care. It's always comes down to format for me. Mm. Cause and, that, and that's why some way to mitigate the hero roster, how are we going to do it when we have 40 heroes and the game's more simple, not like, mm-hmm. the, we don't really have time for this, but like that's a, a whole maybe a whole other Overwatch 2 question where I'm like, the game looks like it's getting more simple and more direct to shooter focus, right? And that's good in some ways for a lot of players, but for people like me or tank players, I think especially that like the the nuance of the MOBA aspects of the game and the positioning and all that. That's why I think 5v5 looks a little underwhelming to me because I'm like, oh, it's just, it, you know, it's COD. Okay. Um, was all that depth i liked and like well the depth was kind of dangerous and it made for all these problems like yeah but that's why i play this game so if yeah, the game was it, fine it, at that, one that's point. a conflict whereas i think you can have that if you add a draft mode or you have other crazy that's just my idea okay there might be other ideas for other other formats but i i think whoever's arguing that's like what we need is more freedom it's like eh, you don't understand how competitive games work if you if you think just maximize the freedom so the casuals are happy they left anyway back back then when we had open queue they were already block, leaving yeah. so it's just yeah. it's just a nonsense argument like like roll queue fixed quick play and i, I don't think there's any way to debate that i, I know there's Facts. problems for different different tiers of play and you can make a, make a lot of arguments about downsides of 222 i understand but like it it was a step forward is, is my argument so i think it's just open queue is not the answer maybe a different format is but uh, it's not what we had before you're just using nostalgia glasses to to remember when you didn't care as much about how broken the game was then because it was broken then trust me you just were, were people weren't as critical on balance back then we we were i feel or i was at least but um the community as a whole like you know i mean like you gotta think think of this right there was a player base that exists that actually thinks Valkyrie 1.0 was not only balanced, that the the nerfs were unjustified. And she is useless now. Now, no, maybe not a top-tier pick, but I feel compared to any other support, if you're outside of the top 1%, Mercy is hilariously overpowered for the amount of skill required to put it. And and I'm like, well, how do we fix well, this? Like, I don't know. I just okay. shrug. Don't do it. Well, the way I feel is like any anytime I watch anyone trying to play Zen or On or any, anything else, yeah, you're it's like right. The, you're right. The values all over the place. Whereas, like, I'm against the Mercy, and I'm just like, it, like as a DPS who's not insane, I'm like, oh, I just I just lose this DPS now. So hopefully my tanks can do something because they just instantly get healed every single time we pick them off against rest. Mm-hmm. It's like like the, the it swings the DPS battle so hard. And mm-hmm. um, I I think what what I'm you know. Sam's got the brig issue. I got the mercy issue. Uh, because <laughs> uh, because I think like that's it, it's sort of pain. No, and I punish like, mercy. No, nobody, uh, you can, you can. It's not, it's not the same thing, but it's just like nobody's good at brig outside of GM or good around yeah. about playing around brig. So yeah. mercy is easier. So they were talking about skill floor versus skill ceiling problems. Mm-hmm. This is why format has to fix it. That's what I'm trying to say. At the end of the day, format needs to fix it for different tiers of play because there's tiers where different heroes are different problems. I mean, uh, Seagull made these arguments years ago to the devs it's like well uh and, and svb has made them as well i believe 
you know, everyone's got their different issues with the game and the format needs to solve it. And it can't just be like, do whatever you want because then you're going to like, like then that turns into double shield and all this other nonsense. That's like, well, that's not a game anymore. Like why, why do we want to play that? Okay. Sorry. Uh, I, I literally, <laughs> you off. might remember, I literally wrote a five page report, put it in a, presented it in a PDF and sent it to the devs on this whole issue. But yeah. Um, any, anything, anything you guys want to add to that, Sam or Flats, on just that thread or the idea of open queue? I think for your guys' tier of play, it's probably better, but it's not better for the whole game. That, I think that maybe that'd be a fair statement. Is, is like, but that's, again, almost saying like, we need a bit different high tier format. I, I don't know if you guys agree or disagree with that. Like, open queue would help you guys, yeah, but I think it would make the game unplayable again, the way I saw mm -hmm. it be unplayable for years for the average player. I, I mean, you know, I want a format change. We're kind of in sync on the draft or ban system of some sort. But yeah, flat Samito. Nah, I think I think there's four. I think there's four stages of Overwatch. Uh, Hero limit. Mer uh, Mercy rework. Brig, and roll queue. I think those are the four major milestones of Overwatch that the game fundamentally changed in. Um, and if you look at those, which one of those had positive impacts and which one of those had extremely negative impacts hero limit was positive it changed the game from a very meme five winstons one lucio or six divas stalling to actually caring about your compositions good mercy rework broke and changed the entire way the game played dive became meta and was dominant for about a year year and a half or so brig gets released Ever since, she has tormented the entire game. Goats was meta. So much so that Roll Q was made. Now, to be honest, we were kind of coming out of Goats meta when Roll Q came out. But it was more or less made so that it will never happen again. So you look at these four things. Roll Q solved a lot of problems. It was good. The hero picks. Limiting to one hero pick per, like for each one. Good change. Brought a lot of balance, team compositions, kind of removed like the wackiness, made it like it made sense. The other two. We've already fixed Mercy. Mercy's in a much better spot competitively. You know, some people think she's overpowered, some people think she's underpowered, but at all levels of play, she sees play, isn't dominant. Break. Sucks for low rank player because they don't know how to play her, and is dominant for high level players. What that says is that nobody enjoys her. Zero. Nobody. low rank players don't think that she's a problem, which, by the way, I love hearing that sometimes. Is, you don't know how to deal with break. Break's never a problem in my gold games. I'm like, yeah, well, your yeah, gold break is, is fucking <laughs> yeah. terrible. Like, well, I don't know what to tell you. But what you don't understand, though, is if you ever do bump into a good break, your team isn't going to do shit. You know? Like, you, you're you not even going to realize why, it. Though. It does happen, but they don't they don't attribute the strength. Exactly. Right. Visual like, effect. DPS yeah, like, no kill thing. DPS no kill thing. You know, like I'll tell you where it comes from, Flats. It's from bad tanks who take shit engagements, and then all of a sudden the team's immortal because they all the healing numbers that Sam gets. Like I see this all the time. It's a huge tip for you tank players. It's like if you're a ball and you engage out of sync and you give Brig Inspire, you might as well just be like, Oh, the team fight's over. Like just go back to spawn and wait for inspire. Yeah. Because like because not only is your engage tool not now there when your damage needs it they got inspire and they're just immortal so you're, you're poking from the side you're trying to come in you dive her then she's got bash and she, she destroys you so uh yeah i agree with all that but it's just a lot of these things they don't translate through the tears because nobody knows how to play <laughs> like no yeah, one knows it, that. it's they so bad it's so it. bad it's, it's at the point I, it's at the point where I am literally gonna teach this whole freaking community how to play Brig just to show how broken it is. Like I've been doing my unranked gym on Brig and like I just turning my brain off. It's so free. The only games you lose are when you have Popo charging in one v six into double shield on Reinhardt and he instant dies. <laughs> That's the only time you lose. But you know what would be crazy? And I want y'all's thoughts on this real quick. I think that the community would have a better understanding of how broken Brig was if her visual effects for how she healed were better. Like, the thing is, you can't see what she's doing. And this is one of the big reasons yeah. why people don't understand how broken she is. If, you, like, I, I, would, I think it would be really interesting to see if, for example, when Inspire is up, if it, like, chained, like, a Mercy Beam or something. Like, just, just visually, like, really show that they're healing. Because you have to have a really good game eye to understand how much it's doing. And I think that's why I was pretty good at the character. Because, like, I can see these things. And I, was, I realized, I was like, wait a minute. 
this is busted. Like, I, do you guys think that would be a big difference? I, I really think it would. Like, if, if people could see visually well, just how much it would be kids. insane how much, like, like imagine, yeah. like, you know how an EMP it would just be visual is, like, oh, my God, an EMP. Yeah. I mean, that's what it would look like. It'd be like, oh, my God, everyone's immortal. Like, that's what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, and you're entirely right. And, 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 and Can a workshop dev do that for us? The, the that would be cool. Could. They definitely could. Yeah, yeah, that sure. would be awesome. I would love that. I would love that. Just so shit, like guys, numbers, like an RPG or something. You saw. Yeah, how, show, how, yeah. How show the heal No, I want you to show the healing. Oh that my can god, be done. this, this yeah, is brilliant. Please, someone do that because it will. I guarantee you, like it will change opinions. Well, There's no getting, way it she won't. She is getting reworked somewhat in Overwatch too, and I, I know it you're won't matter. It's strong. You, yeah, yeah. She'll she will heal and whatnot, and still probably be strong. But her healing makes her broken. Well, yes, but like I, I don't know if we can say definitively that if she loses the stun, then she's not like like I feel like now a top tier brig isn't really punishable. Whip shot is better than her bash nowadays. Aspen. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, yes, but stun. The, 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 the thing is, Frito, the stun is for spacing ninety five percent of the time. Like there, are the only conditions. Well, the main condition where stun is is used like as a stun. It generally only gets value when a fight's kind of already been won. The most well, important thing has always been the chain flail. Chain stuns are insane. In chain the game. stuns, you're, you're absolutely right. It counters right ball. It counters like but, ball and hog and stuff. But for the need, most part, you go ahead. Sorry, I'm not going to go. What, what I need you guys to do as high level players, oftentimes, it, this is like a blind spot for you guys, is that it's tough for you to see the logic of the game when they make 100 changes, right? Like, like a lot of times you're like, well, the spacing and whatnot. And like, I agree with you, but that's because you have to respect the stun. So, so you as a player engaging in on her, you don't get stunned, but that's because you've already done the processes of like, I can't go here and here and here and here because it will stun me. I'll get chain slain and die. We don't know the logic of 5v5 yet because no one's played it. I mean, 10 yeah. people in Hawaii, like we don't know what that's going to be. When you can't get chain stunned, can you just literally go right at her and then she dies? And She's still the like, only support that. that has the tankiness she does, though. She has 50 armor on top of that. If you're a tracer player, your, tra your damage does almost nothing to armor, you know, like... And never mind, she has a 200 HP shield, and and that's apparently going to go up in Overwatch too. I thought I, I remember that was up a little I, bit. I think they're... I think the damage of Bash is going to be about 50 again. Yeah, right? 50 damage, but no no stun on it. It's it's that's fundamentally so broken though well, that that sounds similar to me to the tankiness, quote unquote tankiness that Mercy kind of has anyway on her own because she flies away. So if Brig that's not tanky, you, that's movement. Bash away, she self heals. Self heal is is tankiness though. It's, it's, but yeah, self but self heal stops if she. She takes damage, herself. breaks doesn't. I yes, yeah. So again, you, when you guys argue, often it's like from an absolutist like like point of view. I'm just saying, in principle, the idea of chasing down a support to overwhelm them, y yes, shooting it to stop self heal feels better than overwhelming amounts of inspire mm -hmm. healing. I agree, but my point is, from a mechanics point of view of how you engage it. Mercy has no punishment for you to just run at her, whereas Brig does. And you don't know what that feels like to play against now when you don't have a McCree stun and a Brig stun and this stun and that stun and Hunter stuns. Like they're removing all the stuns. So that Are means. Are they taking CC off whip shot? No, but but my point is you can't chain stun. So you don't know what engagements feel or look like until we see Overwatch without chain stuns. So much of the game about Overwatch 1 with 6v6 is because you can pick chain stuns. Like mm -hmm. it, it matters so much to me. Like, you're not going to have Sigma Hog. You're not, you pick one, one stun. And tanks have most of the stuns, and there's one of them in 5v5. So uh, uh, anyway, um, I think we're raising a lot of good points. I'm just saying, like, we got to look into what... Oh, I think we need to abandon the logic of Overwatch 1 now. Like, like these arguments, they kind of spin Why? out. Why? We're still me. in for another year and a half. <laughs> no, we're not. And, we and, and, and the thing <laughs> is, too, I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you right now, I have been on the money for this for three years. She will still be dominant in Overwatch 2 yeah. until they change the way she heals. She can heal on as on as what per second? Like 70 or 70, something? Or something healing like across the board. In oh, the they did. That's saw. right. That's Which right. they're not keeping, but I'm saying, yes, I hear you. But like, we don't know. They haven't finished the game yet. So you can't say okay. anything. Well, well I'm saying, it, I'm, all I'm saying is like, like well, is it, if it comes out the way it does right now, it's still going to be a problem. That's that's all. That's my only point. But reg regardless, yeah, I don't even know where we started yeah, with this. I don't even know yet. Like, anyway, ah, okay. Yeah, if they're more broken than that, you well, know what? I'm tipping the hat. I'm tipping the hat. Uh, GG's. We don't know what the the meta of a five v five is going to bias towards. At the moment, we Reason. understand getting getting. Well, maybe it, maybe it would be mercy if like uh, uh, you can't close the distance anywhere and you can poke forever and you don't have protection. Like, why would you need Brig if damn if you if it's just a shooter game? Let's well, just imagine Overwatch with zero tanks. You don't engage ever. 
Why would you pick Brig when you could just poke? Okay, we're playing Valorant self right? I'm, I'm, Yeah, he's yeah. no, he is, he is right though. Mercy. Look at the. I have mercy. You have a shield. Great. I uh, I'll poke yeah, you but, with damage. Yeah, but you're not. Your your thing isn't about ring. engaging. It's you're not engaging though. You're you're playing well, no, defensive. He is kind of right though, because look at the Zarya Hog meta, where it was like full poke. That's when Brig won't be played. It'll just be Mercy's end. But Too much damage. apparently, there's nothing to get inspired is, on. Do you? Oh, this is gonna be an unending rabbit hole. But one more question. Um. Are you assuming that that one change to supports where if you get shot, you receive 25% per percent less, less that, healing? That was just a placeholder, there, though. There will be something. They're addressing healing rates is the point. They're the healing rates right. are not also, the problem. It's AOE healing is the problem. But. Yeah, but also remember, guys, the other thing I want to add, I think Frito's kind of alluding to this as well, is remember that we've had literal entire meta shifts in the way the game's been played by the introduction of one hero. We're getting five. So Six, the I point think. that Frida's making is like, oh, yeah. we don't even know, like we, we yes, we can speculate based off now. We can kind of, we're, what we're trying to do is extrapolate. We have like this little bit of information and we're trying to extrapolate for the other half that's in the dark. But literally five new heroes could all be the five meta heroes and we wouldn't even fucking know because they're so <laughs> broken on release. <laughs> Right, we would, that they would, would be so broken. precedent. That so, would follow precedent. Yeah, right. Because they probably yeah. will be a little bit broken. So yeah. it might just change the game so radically that none of this even matters anymore. That, that we're playing the game in such a way that none of it even matters. And it, not not that this makes it any more right. correct what you're saying. But how, how do we get to this point? By the way, it's just like a trigger word. We go. We hear Brig and we go. Yeah, uh, sorry, sorry. Go ahead, Frito. You had another point. You said Here, here's my trump card for you, Sam. Uh, this is what happens when you nerf Widowmaker. Because if Widowmaker is not dominant, well, then the closer range game comes in a little bit. Like Widowmaker's tough to pick. I don't, I don't know how you feel about top 500, but uh, yeah, everywhere else, she, she's like really high risk, high reward. Maybe balanced, maybe where she should be. I think Widowmaker's fine. But what I'm saying is, if the game then comes in a bit, well, then you lose that. I kind of said this earlier, like we're playing Valorant, right? Zero tanks, like that's what a Widowmaker dominant meta almost feels like. And we don't want that necessarily. This is why we need a draft is my point. It's like either the game <laughs> is more distance and we're sniping or we come in a little bit and we were fighting Inspire. It's like you got to pick one. Like like if we have open pick and, and everything's on the table, it's either this is OP or this is OP. It's, is this a good visual? Does this make sense? Does anybody yes. get what yeah, I'm trying yeah, to say? Yeah, 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 like yeah, the yeah. range of the game and the angles and the spots of the maps that are actually good or useful, it's like, uh, I don't find Widowmaker a problem. But if the way to beat Brig as she is designed now is to outpoke her, is what I'm saying. And, and um, I don't know what that's going to look like in, in 5v5 when you can't yeah. protect her with another tank. So that's my argument there. Mm -hmm. Do we have more things we wanted to discuss I, I think we were trying to get like comments from the chat or something yeah, we did chat that. yeah <laughs> i <laughs> actually do i do have to roll here in a minute yeah i was gonna so say i, I actually... think i've taken too much of your guys time already like a lot of the, there were some ideas in chat but i do have to say a lot of the chat ideas were kind of remember that we we can't really get more resources so you know we had ideas about clans about uh, yeah. radical new changes like drop one hero drop a map but again we've we kind of got to run yeah. off the assumption we got to run off the assumption that none of that is coming these are just have to be like tweaks or just little changes here or there that would or, you know, a radical idea, like just drop 5v5 now that Frida suggested earlier. But anyways, guys, I think that's it. Do you, any of you have any sort of concluding thoughts, anything that you didn't get to say? Sam, you go first. Just anything you want to add? Uh, you know, uh, first of all, thanks for having us. It's SVB, you do a great job as always. And uh, Blizzard, I, you know, if someone does end up seeing this, just, just know that we bat for the home team. We always have. We always will. And uh, we love this game. And regardless of what happens, thank you for five years of my life thank you uh Last? this has been fun oh sorry I, 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 i'll just go quick uh i went into this call like yeah i don't really have anything planned i don't know what i'm to say <laughs> I like an hour if we need to not not remembering how emotional we are all are about this subject so it's been a blast to catch up with you guys and uh i i just hope we have some good answers for the many questions we still have on on the table and well, the ball's in your court, Blizzard. That's that's all I'll say. I'm looking forward to hear what they what they have to uh, steer the ship in the right direction. Flats. I know someone is going to see this, so I had to be a little bit. You know, I do know some stuff. You know, I do know some stuff, and I will say it's good, and I'm excited for it, and I think people are going to be really excited for it. But there needs to be more. Like it's, we're no longer playing. We're playing catch up now. You know, it, it's a little, little is nice, but don't do too little too late because, yeah, you want Overwatch 2 to be a massive hit, but unless you solve those problems now, it, that massive hit isn't going to last very long. 
It's really not. And we all want the same thing. Nobody's on the nobody's on the want to see it fail side. And if you believe that, then I can't help you because there's no reason anyone here would want it to fail. So I hope it's realized that we're all on the same side. We just maybe see things differently. Well, yeah, well, us wanting the game to fail would be like burning the building you work at. It's just like, well, what would that get me? Like, <laughs> it, would, it, would yeah. just fuck, it would just fuck me as much as anyone else. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Flats, are you still streaming, by the way? Uh, Probably. All right, well, I'm going to send these guys your way then. I just, just had to restart it because it was about to time out. So, thank you guys so much for joining me. Again, if anyone watches from the Blizzard team, Andy, uh, I hope this demonstrates that it is all love. And we do get heated. We do get passionate. We do sometimes, you know, may, let's say we we exaggerate or we use terms that we maybe would have softened in retrospect but it is all love it's all about trying to make the game better so hopefully at least some right. of this was helpful some of this was relevant and it demonstrates the the kind of passion that's in the community to see this game thrive again so hopefully yeah hopefully you guys as well watching enjoyed it it, it fit the criteria and again once again thanks to samito flats and Frito guys check them out you know they're you know them you love them they're awesome check out their content thanks to them for joining me giving me their time and that's it from us see you guys next time peace out go say hello to flats Wait, why am I waving? Okay, so anyways. All right. <laughs> All right, Flats. boys. I'll see you guys later. Flats, have a good stream, bud. All right. Peace out, man. See you later, guys.